What's up, y'all? Hey, everybody. Uh, good to see you here. Um, we're going to be gaming here in just a sec, waiting on Jamie to connect here. But uh, until then, thought I'd pop in and say hi. Uh, how y'all doing today? What you got going on? I was uh, mostly working, but I've been playing a lot of God of War, uh, the Ragnarok, and dude, it's so good. <laughs> like the story that that game weaves is just so top notch. I am, uh, I'm a big fan of the God of War games and the good stuff. Jermango, welcome, welcome everybody. Miss Zfuls, DJ Rangey, everybody, guys, glad to see y'all here. It is, I don't know, what, what's it like out there near you, uh, uh, Ms. Zeefels? Are you guys, uh, you guys, like, we're, we're in, like, the high, the, the high 30s right now. We're not quite in the freezing area, but, yeah, <laughs> at work, clearly working, right? Absolutely. That's one of the beauties of working from home is that I often put, like, YouTube or Twitch on in the background while I'm doing my, my normal stuff wet and cold i almost like what would rather it be icy or snowy than just rainy and cold because at least that's unique and interesting it's not just like it's it's cold and rainy yeah like it's the worst or the wind the wind is absolutely where it's like oh it's 40 degrees out right now but then the wind is blowing so it feels like half a degree out and it's just absolute garbage i can't stand it man I am not a big fan of it being very, very cold. <laughs> Miss Zeefels, you know where your husband is? We're waiting on that dude right now. As soon as he jumps in here, we'll be all set and ready to go. So we're going to be playing uh, Shredder's Revenge today, which if you guys don't know, if you're a youngin, uh, this is basically a sequel to a an arcade game from when I was a kid. I was like 10 years old and it is so fun and such good homage. It's so addictive and like easy to play. It's this classic brawl beat-em-up game that brings back the old art design the the pixel art and everything like that for uh for the old tmnt games that are just so good you know of the whole era and those like late 80s early 90s sort of 16-bit video games obviously the resolution and like the bitrate and whatnot is way higher with the <laughs> with the modern stuff so there's no way a 16-bit gaming console could have put out the look of the stuff that we're going to be playing, but it is great homage and it's super duper fun. Oh, he's here. He's here. All right, hang on. Let's uh, hang on. We got that. And oh no, hang on. I got to remember. So this is why I got to remember to take care of this stuff uh, ahead of time hold on just a sec everybody so you can we can make sure that you can see jamie here and then oh look at me i'm such a dingus you guys get to see uh, behind the curtain here <laughs> and now i gotta go to my obs to make sure we get him all sorted here no not that one <laughs> thanks jamie for for taking the fall there man i appreciate you yeah no i told steve i'd be here i don't know if everybody can hear me yet yeah, i told no, steve i'd be you. here okay good good yeah. i told steve i'd be here 15 minutes early and i was sitting on my computer 30 minutes early and he messaged me and i didn't respond and my wife knocked on my door and said um steve's literally waiting for you right now i was like <laughs> oh <laughs> so i'm here i'm just a dope and uh just, wasn't just as here as i thought it would yeah. it's weird sometimes discord will give you like when somebody joins the video call they'll give you that like r phone ringing thing uh but then other times it'll do nothing like you'll just look at your discord and all of a sudden somebody's there in uh in a in a 
video chat and you're like, oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Good was... to see you. Glad you're here, man. <laughs> you're like a dork. I was totally here and I'm sorry. So, no, no, no uh, worries at all. Yeah. We're here. We're good, man. So how are you, Jamie? Bro, I'm super good. I'm super good. I I don't know. Lots of lots of cool things going on. Lots of intense things. But man, I'm I'm very, very happy. That's How about awesome. you? Uh, I'm doing really, really well. Um, good. It, it's the same kind of thing where there's just a lot going on and, uh, you know, trying to fit it all into into uh, every single day is always a challenge and it's always a fun yeah. one though so when it's good it's like stuff, 400 days in a year right so we yeah, have plenty yeah, of time yeah. to figure stuff out yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. man oh man so anyway hey uh, we're gonna be here talking to jamie jamie goes to new hope foursquare in salem oregon yeah. so we're gonna be talking about his home church but also jamie is the what do you call are you like the ceo what do you call yourself yeah like i think like people that have been in ministry a while want to hear me say like, oh, I'm the CEO because they know who they're talking about. I just want to be like, hey, I'm, I'm one of the people at SG. And then people are like, oh, he's more than that. Like, no, I'm a dude at SG that loves kids. I am the founder and CEO. That's the official thing. But um, that's like boring stuff, you know? <laughs> Yeah. The fun stuff is I get to hang out with kids and uh, talk to them about satellite gaming, talk to them about video games and show them Jesus' love. That's the cool part. That, that yeah. is the cool part. I wholeheartedly agree. Your <laughs> wife wants to insist that you are the CEO, though. So uh, CEO oh, yeah. of Satellite Gaming. So, hey, before we get into Shredder's Revenge, which is I, I was just Woo! telling everybody how stoked I am to be playing this game because it's classic homage yeah. to like our children era of gaming or like when we oh, were dude. kids era of gaming. Oh, um, Oh, Gherkenstiel. What's up? Gherkenstiel, Gherkenstiel what's up, dude? Hey, man. DJ a... Raintree, too. Yeah, dude. We got a lot of cool people it's coming amazing. in. What's up, everybody? Uh, we're here with uh, Jamie Harris from New Hope Foursquare, as well as uh, from uh, Satellite Gaming. Uh, we're going to yeah. be talking about his home church and uh, talking about his ministry. Hey, man. Th thanks for it, man. I appreciate that. Glad to see you here. So, uh, hey, Jamie, first of all, tell me about New Hope, man. Tell me, oh, no, first of all, tell oh, me man. about you. I want to know about you. Who are you? What do you love? What are you into? What's going on with you, my friend? Man, me. Uh, well, I love, um, I love my wife who is in this call. So there's a bit of obligation to say as such. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that's all he ever talks about when I talk to him, by the way, is how much he loves his wife. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, dude, she's <laughs> awesome. What, who, I'm not even worthy of, of this marriage. What is this? <laughs> wow. I'm, it's, it's incredible. Um, and <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I love my wife. I have a daughter, amazing daughter, uh, Macy Joy. She is my joy. And Jessica's middle name is also Joy. Um, they are both my joy. I love them very much. Mm. Um, let's see. I, I like video games. I love Jesus. I love music. Uh, I love drawing. And I love uh, koi. Like koi, the, the, the fish. I have koi fish. And I will talk about them until I'm blue in the face. That was, awesome. I mean, I remember when you very first got them and you were telling me like, dude, I've taken a no. deep dive into koi fish. Like I'm into it now. And I was like, all right, man, good for you. Bro, it's like it's deep it's, it's deep it really is and i'm i'm proud of it no shame um get off my back if you have anything negative to say and i'll throw <laughs> you in my pond and you will hang out with my fish and see how awesome they are and then you'll say sorry <laughs> ah, i'm into it man that's awesome i have you're, you're my actually my second friend who moved into a place that already had a koi pond and was like no it's actually really cool like you're, you're building your own ecosystem Dude. it's like yes you know all those games where you like uh, uh build um like sim city or frost punk where you like you're building yeah. a whole community whatnot. exactly it's like that but real life and for fish so yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> oh dude it totally is it's it's like a real life simulator you know my so there, there's a couple things that i'll say and then i won't talk much more about the fish okay but two things <laughs> one um yeah if you build the ecosystem properly you actually this is weird you actually don't have to feed the fish a lot because the way a natural ecosystem works, like, do you think who feeds like the carp that are in like big lakes and things like, God. like God, God feeds them, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's great, Steve. Thank you. Uh, God, <laughs> God feeds the carp and uh, it's, it's a natural ecosystem. It's like, well, yeah, but there's stuff to eat. Well, yeah, but what do they eat? Well, let me tell you this um, fish poop. Okay. Fish poop. And then when fish poop, Plants actually like to get the bacteria from said poop, and then plants produce algae, and that algae is what the carp eat. And koi are not actually descendants, the descendants of goldfish, so they're not like, feed me, I'm this desperate house pet that needs to be taken care of. No, they're actually descendants of carp, 
and uh, catfish. So they are fully self-sustaining in the right ecosystem. So yes, I have a bag of food and I feed them on occasion, but in this season in particular, basically what they do is they eat off the algae and then they freeze over the winter. And then at the end of winter, there won't be much algae left because there hasn't been sunshine for the ecosystem to function properly. So um, it will be beneficial for me to feed them some fish food, but eventually they'll just be able to feed and sustain themselves again through summer and eat off of the algae. So it's awesome. Point number two, and then I'm done. My <laughs> father-in-law bought me a remote control submarine. And, uh, okay, no, that's awesome. Yes, it's does actually it awesome. Camera? It has like lights. It does not have a camera. People oh, ask me that. I need to get awesome. it a camera. That's still I, cool, I need to get that. I mean, but like it has lights and it, it like, you can, it like the fish like hang out with it. It bumps into them and stuff. And it's actually like legit. He got it. Yeah, he like showed up one day and he's like playing with it. I'm like, what are you doing in my backyard? He's like, I'm playing with this cool submarine I got. I'm like, you're actually serious. And yeah, he certainly was. And he wasn't wrong. It's pretty awesome. So well, guys, koi thanks fish again. and, and. <laughs> thanks again for joining us on the podcast, our Koi Pond podcast. Uh, it's been so great to have you here. And uh... <laughs> I can't help it, Steve. I can't help it. <laughs> That's what it is, man. When you when you nerd out about something, it's my honest opinion that everybody is a nerd about something. There is oh. at least one thing that if you bring it up, somebody's going to go, I can talk forever about this. Like, <laughs> Yeah, shut me up because it won't happen. <laughs> no. OK, so then tell me about let's start with talking about New Hope and then let's get into gaming so let's yeah. talk, tell me about new hope foursquare tell me what, you know, a little bit about your church what kind of what's yeah, your style, what kind, what's going on there and then let's get into this game new hope is great we've been there for about a year and a half um known people from there for for longer you know uh i would say the, the, the they're very techy right so the the worship i would i would say that it's very up to date it's hard to say modern because when you say modern, people are like, "Oh, so from Michael W. Smith, eh?" Yeah, like, yeah, uh, absolutely. no, contemporary. like, <laughs> yeah, it, contemporary. Like, you know, it, pra praise the Lord for Michael W. Smith did a lot of revolutionary things. But uh, you know, they they basically um, they rotate through anything that is going to be on the radio, that anything is going to be even a little edgy, like some of us like edgy musicians like. You know, um, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, very. Um, I would say very technologically advanced, uh, great lighting and, and things of that nature. They, it's, and it, they don't overdo it to where it's like, oh, I'm at a concert. No, they just, they're really intentional about creating a, a space that is like has minimal distractions. Um, very expressive worship. Um, Four squares kind of got some Pentecostal roots. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, not going to be, um, unco it's not an environment where, you, you know, some people that aren't familiar with Pentecostal roots would be uncomfortable. It's a very, it's very welcoming, very inviting. I would say they, try to create a space where most people that go to church there um, would, would probably feel feel pretty comfortable. You know, I know that's easy to say about any church, right? right. But it, it's, it's, it's something that is at the front of their minds constantly. Like, do you want to invite your friends here? I've been to churches where the answer is no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, like I invite young people. I invite people that are older than me and, and, and many have come, visited and, and stayed and continue to go. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. We're going to be talking more about yeah. New Hope and again about Satellite later. But for now, uh, hey, you want to play some Shredder's Revenge? I do. I need my cable for my controller, bro. Uh, I, it keeps... Ever since Are I you... found out that the PS5 is uh, Bluetooth and uh, and like can also take a USB cord to plug directly into your computer, I have used nothing but PS5 controllers to play anything. I even have a really? Bluetooth adapter for my Switch. So when the Switch is in its uh, dock... I can use the PS5 controller to game on my Switch. So Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's just, cool. I really like the PS5 controller. I really really do. Okay. Yeah, um, bro. Now I got to remember how to uh to connect with you. Let's let's play a new game. Uh yeah, I'm okay losing. So uh oh no, I'm going to keep my power levels. Take that. We're oh yeah, there you go. For sure. All right, I know I gotta find a way. Yeah, I know how to. I know how to skip, or I know how to play games. Select you push your hero. Bar, you push a lot of buttons. All right, party up. All right. I don't think uh, it's gonna let me play it on my mouse and keyboard, is it? I have no idea. That's a good question. Okay. Oh wait, do we have to be friends? Like Xbox friends? Probably. Oh, I mean, we are crap. friends in real life. But right, 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 right. Do we have to be Xbox friends? Life. No, I didn't even think about that. That's okay. You know what? Let's, uh... oh, no, there's a party code. Maybe you can put in that. Is, oh, is cool, cool. Like a, like a code option. Yeah, yeah. yeah hey, if dude. anybody watching wants to try and jump in on Shredder's Revenge, there's the code right there oh, at the bottom of the screen. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. That's so cool. 
Gohan Drake, yeah. Uh, so Gohan Drake has been my gamer tag since there was such thing as gamer tags. Like since there was such thing as internet for me to have uh, like a name for. And uh, it's because I was a, a huge Dragon Ball Z nerd uh, back in the day. I still love it, but I used to know everything about it back in the day. And Gohan uh, is and was my favorite character. And then I'm a big DC Comics fan uh particularly robin particularly the tim drake robin and so uh tim drake is my favorite comic book character all across the board so it's gohan drake it's uh that's the story that you didn't want to know yeah dragon ball super uh i i've been hearing weird rumors that somebody's trying to buy out funimation and therefore they might be going to a streaming service uh, a different streaming service other than their own sometime soon so i don't know rumors oh, okay all rumors uh, I'm gonna go. I'm, you know, I just realized I don't have my light on. Hey, y'all can see me. Hi, everybody. I don't know why I didn't have that on. <laughs> hey, it was a certain ambience that I'm okay with. Yeah, <laughs> the dimly lit ambience. Mm. Right. <laughs> um. All right. Do you have an option to connect? Um, I do, but I just just went and got my controller for me. You locked the door. <laughs> Drake is my favorite rapper also. You know what? I, this is this is something that I don't know if it's a pride or a shame, but I could not tell you a single song by Drake. I'm sure if you played some of his songs, I would be like, I know that song. But if you were to say name one Drake song, I'd be like, I got nothing. I have absolutely I got nothing. nothing for you. <laughs> that's freaking funny. Dude, <laughs> I actually, that's how I am with a lot of like, uh, like hip hop. Um, like I... I'm a sucker for one sec, plugging my controller. Dude, I'm a sucker for for hip hop, for um, for all of that mumbo jumbo. But most of the time I couldn't tell you like who who plays this hippie hop song? I don't what, what is this? I don't I don't know. Um yeah. I don't these know why days, I don't know, but I don't. These days I've gotten really into lo-fi, just whatever lo-fi, like lo-fi jazz is yep, a really big one it. that I'm into, but uh, just because I'm at a stage in my life where I like music, I love music, I'll always love music, but also sometimes I just want to chill and just have chill music Dude. in the background. And so... Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, just uh, having some chill lo-fi on, like in lo-fi jazz, or I made like this four-hour... Um, nerdy lo-fi so it's got like avatar the last airbender lo-fi tons of like final fantasy and pokemon oh, and dude. undertale and like is this a playlist what's it on yeah it's on um amazon it's a playlist that i made it's called work chill because i play it at work i work at a an lgs a local game store and so it's real fun to put that on in the background of the game store. that's have, sick have customers coming in and browsing and whatnot and then like i'll see them stop kind of tilt their head and they'd be like is this the Pokemon theme song? Like, yes, it is. You Dude. Got it. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah I love, I love that. <laughs> Dude, my, my controller's plugged in, but it's not, I'm like so ill prepared for this, Steve. I know. I'm sorry, dog. <laughs> the good news is, is that you and I are personable people. We can just chat and it's going to be. Fun. Yeah, bro. So yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks for your grace um tell you what i'm gonna i'm gonna head back to uh to this one right here and when you're all set and ready to go so you got that way you guys don't have to just stare at uh yeah right the <laughs> the, the screen there so but um uh dj raintree yeah I, I figured you know a lot of songs being a dj that you can just like say oh this song by this person whatever uh, did you just know like are you a music trivia kind of person where if somebody tries to say like who sings this song or whatever else, would you be able to just like toss that stuff out? If you guys don't know, uh, DJ Raintree, my friend Ryan, uh, he is an actual professional DJ. And so he does a lot of like weddings and things like that. So he's a stud. He's a stud indeed. Uh, this is a mug that somebody made for me, by the way. That's just in case I forget my own name. I love this mug. That is awesome. <laughs> I uh, I I drink about three or four cups of tea every day. A while back, I was up to like six cups of coffee every single day. And I told myself, I got to stop. That's too much coffee. I, I got to stop this. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to swap over to tea. And I've always loved tea. Uh, and so I swapped over to tea. But instead of it curing my six cup of coffee a day, now I'm just up to like four or five cups of tea a day. And it's just, that's all. Tea is a man's drink. That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> man steve I, I apologize 
You gotta give me like happening? another another second, dude. Nah, no, I, take your this, time. It's just not connecting the controller. One sec. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Yeah, I, how am I not dead, right? It's just, I love tea, I really do. It's, uh, oh, of coffee as well, six cups of coffee. This was back when I was a youth pastor, and so it was not uncommon at all for me to like be working eight hours into the in the office, and then right after that, go to, uh, go to the youth group or to a Bible study or right, you know, right afterward, but then I'd have to like, hang out not have to i would you know counsel some students or chat with them for you know an hour or two afterward and i'd be working like 14 hour days and yeah six cups of coffee keeps you going man <laughs> a game called hurdle gives you one second of a song uh pretty talented oh yeah dang guess the track so that's like the uh again i'm uh, dating myself here name that tune uh, it's an old game show where they would play like a certain amount of notes of a song and the people would have to guess what the song is just from the notes and so at the end it would be like this betting thing where like I could name that tune in five notes I can name that tune in three notes I can name that tune in two notes and then say do it make it happen and then they would have this band that would play two notes of a song and then stop and you'd have to you have to guess it it's wild Anybody else have any idea what I'm talking about? Anybody have ever know here of name that tune? Or am I really just that old? <laughs> okay. Is is the Xbox controller USB three? I don't the Xbox uh the actual Xbox, Xbox one. one? Xbox One controller? I don't know. That's a good question, man. USB C. But I have USB C, but is it USB? Does it have to have 3.0 or can yeah, it work just the, fine? On the other side of it, is it does it need 3.0? His uh, his PC isn't taking his uh, his controller here, so uh, I've used case, it plenty. Like I don't understand this. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do right here? Hang on, hang on, hang, hang on. It's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Um, I am going to. Grab is Bluetooth this, gonna work? And I'm gonna grab this i'm gonna grab this and i'm gonna grab where's it at this there it is Steve's quick on his feet thanks brother no it's fine while we're uh, while we're waiting on jamie to figure things out which is fine dude i love talking to you uh there we go i'm gonna play some marvel snap anybody else into marvel snap right now <laughs> do it please yeah dude i i haven't played so teach me your ways man it's I call it a French fry game because it's so easy to just have one. And because it's so easy to have one, next thing you know, you've had like 30. And it just over and over again, it's like that. So uh, uh, tech support would ask if you plugged it in. Hey, can you turn it off and turn it back on again? So. <laughs> oh yeah, I plugged it in many times, in many ways. <laughs> So, uh, here, yeah, if you guys haven't played Marvel Snap, it's a pretty simple card game where there are three locations and each location has its own abilities and you have, uh, you gain one energy each turn and you play cards and you, tr and the cards are worth points and you try and win the location. And of course, all the cards have their own uh, special abilities. So decks are 12 cards and each game is six rounds. And so it's so quick and so simple. It's a, a super fun game. Oh, the Bifrost is good news for me. Oh, but I have no cards to play. This is terrible. Genshin Impact is coming out of the card game? I did not know that. I have not gotten into Genshin Impact, but I got a lot of friends who are way into it. Big, big fans of the, the Genshin and the Impact. The Genshin and the Impact? Yeah, Genshin and the Impact. I think it's a great game, have. dude. I don't play it, but I think it's great. If that makes any sense. No, absolutely makes sense. Yeah. I, uh... I've been talking to a lot of people about how the whole like gatekeeping of people saying things like, oh, you haven't played this game? What's wrong with you? You haven't played this game? What's going on? You know, blah, 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 whatever else. And uh, after turn four. Okay, sorry, I'm having to think here. There's too many games, bro. So I want to do this. And yeah, for, for real, there are just too many games. And you can't be expected to play all of them. That's just that's just not tenable. You know, you can't you can't do that. And so... I told somebody the other day that I've never played a single Red Dead Redemption game. I've never played a single Assassin's Creed game. You know what? I'm okay with it. It's gonna, it's gonna be fine, everybody. Oh, this dude done moved my cards. That's okay. They're all gonna get some sort of bonus. That made me sad. 
this dude made me sad. Hey, everybody, this dude made me sad. You should uh, <laughs> yell at them. All right. Is that a, so you're playing a real, a real homie right now? Like a real life person? A real person. At least we assume, obviously, there's no way to know right, whether it's a bot right. or not these days. So, uh, but for the most part, you can uh, probably assume it's a real person these days. That's fine. Okay. So, see, this is what I'm going to do, bro. I'm just going to go download Marvel Snap and you can teach me your ways. How's that? Oh, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> We're going to get yeah, some Marvel I'm... Snap in here. Yeah, bro. I, if that's okay with you, I'm sorry. I, yeah, no, it's just fine. No I just I want to hang out and I... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, everybody. Oh, here. I, I put this back yeah. up. I meant to For those of you who it. wanted Ninja Turtles, I ruined your dreams. And... I know. I'm. We're so sorry, everybody. It just it happens sometimes, though. That's the life. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, while Steve's you're... two hour podcast is going to be edited to a 15 minute podcast. <laughs> nah, bro. While you're, uh, you're, hang on. I got to, I'm thinking too much here. We're going to do that. And we're going to do that. Oh, hopefully that'll be okay. All Tell right. me about the game. Like, I don't know anything about it. And then after this, we can talk like more. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like, you're going to kick my butt. dude. That's good. Well, we're not, we, we don't play against each other. Uh, this is oh, going to really? yeah, because cool. you're, Right now, because uh, it just released, it's basically still in early access. It is. What is this guy doing? All random. It's all random. There's, you build the okay. deck and you hit play, and it randomly picks a person, and that's it. There's nothing else that you really. Can do other than that. Yeah, yeah. That's actually cool. I, I feel like that's a good way to like learn a game, right? There's yeah. like, don't overthink this. Just do it. It's exactly yeah. that. It, it's and it's the best way for them as devs to work out all the kinks. You know, they're keeping oh, it as simple real, as possible. Man. I played uh, a match three game called Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest right when it came out. And it just like constantly uh, changed as time passed. And it, like the, the foundation of the game stayed the same, but they kept like adjusting and changing as time passed because they needed to. Don't you have to build the decks? Yes, you do have to build all the decks. Uh, and okay, so for all y'all, the, the basic uh, outline of how this game works is you get cards, and as you play, you can win what's called credits, uh, these things up here. And those credits allow you to purchase upgrades to the art on your card. There is no real pay to win type stuff. Like you can't just buy better cards. And so uh, all of these like arrows pointing up means that these cards are upgradable. I just don't have enough credits right now. And then uh, also when you win, you get what's called um, those things i can't remember what these things are called those things you get these things and so i have like 16 of them for angel and i need 10 to upgrade angel if i wanted to anyway all that to hmm. say that when you upgrade a card it also gives you points toward a collection level and collection levels are how you gain new cards gain more things so at first there's like a set amount of cards or like the set cards that you're going to get so if you had like way down the collection level, there's a specific order of cards that you get. But then as you get higher, you start pulling random cards, which allows it to be more of a random thing. Everybody's not building the exact same decks because not everybody has the exact same cards. So, okay, yeah. Uh, and then other than that, there's just like any other uh, card game, there's metas and there's styles and whatnot. I have a ton of different decks here. So yeah, it's super fun. But uh, no, while you're downloading, uh, I want you to talk to me about satellite gaming. Tell me what satellite gaming is. What do you guys do? Uh, what, what's going on with satellite these days? Satellite gaming. Um, yeah, so our, our mission is pointing students to Jesus Christ by building relationships through video games. Um, and we, man, it, it's, it's so interesting. When we first started, it was very event-based, right? Like on a local level, it was right, very right. event-based. And people are like, oh, so you do events? I'm like, well, yeah, but like our events are a means to the end. But then we're like, wait, are they really? Like we say that, but <laughs> but we, we were getting, you know, first event, 40 people, next, you know, 125. It eventually got to where we were having 500 people show up at a couple events in a row and clo close to, and, and we really wanted to make sure like, what it, what is this? We don't want to be known as a, an event-based organization. Right. Um, and, what ended up happening was we ended up getting offered uh, through our public schools, like we're a Christian organization, right? But we had earned so much credibility with the public school system by volunteering at lunches, volunteering um, for sporting events, like working in like 
you know the like the snack shack and stuff and yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and just trying different different ways of supporting the community like within the school district it, eventually we built trust with them and they said hey why don't you just run some after school programs for us and we're like yeah we don't have like the capacity to do that that sounds awesome we want to do it but what would it look like they're like oh we'll pay you like okay um, we <laughs> well, have the capacity now no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. and, and it wasn't like we're not going to do it unless there's money it was just, we'd have to figure it out you know there's a cost yeah. for that like there's volunteers there's program that's needed there's a lot of things but i mean what it did was it, it made it so like the school was saying no, no we want this so much that like we will cover the costs you just show up and bring the expertise so we started doing that and that grew to uh, a point where we were able to teach other people what we're doing so we're like okay well there's an educational department and then we started trying to do like streams and and online events which those things are great but there's already a lot of people that do like really good streams there's there's people that that are making great podcast content there are people that are really active in the electronic world for gaming and nerd culture ministry you know there's there's ltn there's there's other people like we're like we don't want to we have no reason to compete with that we're just going to point them to these other people doing that right right and, and and so what we did was we decided what what are the things that we really want to focus on and and yes we we have a discord community yes it's it's i'd say our discord community is pretty active yes we do some live streams for events yes when COVID hit just like the rest of the world we did everything digital but we actually don't have much of a digital footprint and that's an intentional decision um but our local community impact i would say is, is pretty awesome like we have a great relationship with our local community so um th that said the three primary things we do would be um we engage with our local community um we educate people um both uh um locally and abroad and um and we we talk about jesus so it's, it's community um education and jesus uh, those are three primary things that we would do i'd say that's awesome and just that whole thing i mean it's something that we, we talk about like, i was going to say in almost every stream this is like our fourth but in almost every one uh, yeah. something that we talk about uh where it's so important because whether intentionally or unintentionally uh the church has ostracized nerds for a yeah. really long time uh you know whether it be the satanic panic or whether it be uh, you know, the whole violence in video games scare or whatever else, uh, the church has, again, whether purposefully or, or accidentally yeah, told uh, nerds, you are wrong, you are sinful, whatever you're doing is bad. And so being a community that says, hey, we are gaming and we love video games. Also, we love you. Also, we love Jesus. Like, those are all just hugely important things. Bro, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I think the beautiful thing is this is a different conversation five years ago than it is today, right? Like this is a different conversation pre-COVID than it is today. Like for nerds on the world, praise Jesus for COVID, man. Like, like seriously, <laughs> I... You, oh, did we lose your mic? Oh no, we may have lost Jamie. <laughs> I think Jamie froze, you guys. I don't know if he uh, accidentally disconnected his uh, his Discord or something, but uh, can you? Or maybe it's me. Is it me? Hey, somebody, tell me if you can hear me. Are we still on? <laughs> okay, good. Woo. All right. <laughs> yeah, for real, Gergenstiel. Just uh, they're they're shutting him down for saying thank thank you for COVID. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with uh, with Jamie there, but uh, I, I'm gonna say yes. It was uh, an interesting thing, COVID, because uh, the FBI agent and his PC camera pulled the plug. <laughs> but, but what he's talking about is a, a pretty accurate thing. Where oh, well, fine, you can go there and you can go there. I guess that sucks. Uh, that a lot of people had to start learning about video games or a lot of people had to start learning about digital entertainment in some way so that uh, so that so I'm trying to do two things at once here uh, so that they could just entertain themselves so they could have fun you know and uh, it's just one of those things where yeah people 
had to find a way to to have fun and entertain themselves and that just happened to be the way that they did it so i have good news and bad news hey hey we hear jamie again what's the what's the what's the bad news and the good news my friend you already know the bad news i got yeah. dropped from the call yeah yeah okay what's the good news then <laughs> well and also my camera settings are all changed now uh okay who cares the good news is my controller's working but i don't care about that at this point i just want to i just want this to work <laughs> Aren't you like a, a professional gaming type person? Isn't this like what you do? I make sure to tell you, <laughs> not digital. <laughs> we don't actually do live streaming. I do calls and I, I sit here a lot of the day. <laughs> I don't know what any of this stuff does. Like, I, I don't. Other people do and they help me and teach me. But no, I don't stream. Um, bro, uh, I, I actually want to go back to what you were saying because I, I I love it. And maybe you were already on a different tangent at that point. But your question, you, you were talking about churches basically in, in how we've kind of like ostracized gamers, right? right and I know right. that's like a really common theme in 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 our people group, right? Like the, the people we hang out with, Steve, that's just a common theme because yeah. we're passionate about gamers and we're, we're also passionate about church. And can you see me or just hear me? Uh, I cannot see you. We can hear you though, right? Y'all can hear Jamie. Oh wait, we had something for a second there. Okay, my camera should be on. I see, I see two Steves. <laughs> uh, bro, my camera's on now. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Um, but, bro, like, we have, um, we we have, we've ostracized gamers. And what I don't want to do is turn that into something that is like. Like, hey, because of that, the church sucks, right? Like, dude, we are humans. And like, man, you look through the church history, like, we, we do kind of suck, but that's because we're people and like, people kind of suck. You know what I mean? Like, like we're right, just, right. we're just humans. For and, real, real. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and because of that, I would say, oh, hi, it's people. What's up, LTN? LTN's uh, uh, Raiden here. Hey guys, good to see you. And uh, oh, we saw two me for a second there. Jamie, you keep like popping for just a second. Uh, what's up, everybody? Yeah, get raided, nerd. What's up? Uh, good to see you. <laughs> welcome everybody to Safe Point Ministries. Uh, if you guys don't know what we do, uh, we're an organization that exists specifically to help, uh, like specifically nerds who don't have a real world physical community, uh, which nerds can get pretty guilty of and uh, we help them find a nerd friendly church in their area so uh, a big part of what we do is uh is interview nerdy uh, ministry leaders nerdy uh like pastors and whatnot and talk to them about their home church so right now uh we're supposed to be having jamie harris uh, we do have <laughs> jamie harris on here uh, you can see my little face yeah we're having <laughs> i am here technical you hear me but you can't see me whatnot so hang on what? oh oh hey Something just happened here. Hang on. Okay. I'm like I the master of breaking things. No. Nope. Yeah. Oh, well, what have I done? Now I'm breaking things. All right, hang on. Hey, man, we're a good team. I know. Because I want to make sure that I get the right view. So yes. this just needs okay. to be known. It just needs to be public information while you're all coming in here. This is my fault. Anything <laughs> bad that happens is just my fault. Ask my wife. Uh, no, I'm, I'm like... I, I, my my computer crashed. Couldn't get my controller working. It's, it's ridiculous, man. It's been, it's been a crazy one, but uh, but it's been cool. We've been talking. We're talking right yeah. now just about how, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, the church has uh, has ostracized nerds for a really long yeah. time. You know, told them that uh, we're wrong. Oh, Bubba's here. We got to start over. So, hey, everybody, okay, welcome to save. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. But along those lines, like that's a, that's a topic we talk about like a lot, right? Like you, you you like give the mic to to Bubba, to Christian Ninja, to Gherkenstiel, to 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 Mrs. Zeefels. Like give the mic to to a lot of these people, and they'll they'll speak on what's up, Ninja. Uh, they'll speak on this topic and say like, yeah, the church has ostracized them, but but like that's not an uncommon thing for the church to do. And I don't say that as like the church is bad, right? I love the church. But it, it, it's common because like who's in charge of churches? Like I believe that God has God's ultimately in charge of the church. It won't die because of his glory and his, you know, let's get into the theology there. But but he has entrusted us with the task of overseeing the church. And like I don't know about y'all, but like I kind of suck sometimes. Like I'm a human yeah, being. Like I yeah. do dopey things. Like if I'm gonna like like screw up how I how I how I work 
sometimes like we've all made mistakes at job at our job and if our job happens to be the church like dang we're gonna hurt some people i think it's how we respond to that and how we actively live in grace and we say like look we screwed up let's do something about this and i think covid put us in a position where we had to say let's do something about this nerdy thing. Mm -hmm. And it gave churches the only option is to get digital. And so praise Jesus for that. I love it. I'm excited that um, although it was kind of forced, <laughs> to, like, I feel like I'm not saying I'm not, I mean, you know, I, I think God finds a way to, to make blessings out of weird things. And, right. and those of us that, that are engaged in digital ministry after COVID happened, we're like, all right, the world gets it. Now they just, they have to either get it or just close the doors. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Everybody, I really need a uh, Heimdall right now. That's, uh, that's just a fun fact. Oh, no, 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 no. I Is off. that some sort of a pill that you take? Yeah. Uh, oh, he Heimdall? retreated. You take it. And you... <laughs> Is Heimdall a card in this game? Yeah, Heimdall's a card okay. in this game. Because I'm like, I need a Heimdall. Babe, I need... it sounds like some weird pill. Babe! I like, need a Heimdall. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So on that note, does uh, New Hope have any sort of like nerdy ministries or do you guys do any game days or anything like that? Yeah, it's, I love that. Um, yes and no. So mm -hmm. we're bringing it, right? SG is like, hey, what can we do? What I've loved about New Hope is there are a couple people on staff that just really boldly, I, I got invited to speak at one of their staff meetings about SG. It's there for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And a couple people were just like, hey, I don't like it. I'm like, thank you. Like, you're who I want to spend my time with, right? Because like, what, what's, what's, I mean, if I talk to other nerds in the room, we're just going to end up talking about Smash Bros or League of Legends <laughs> for an hour and it's going to waste everybody's time. But I want to help people understand that can boldly say like, look, I don't get it. I don't like it. Help, help me understand. Like, you don't like it, but you invited me here. Like, that's right. sick. Like, to me, that's really cool. It tells me they want to understand at the very least. So there's, there's people uh, on the team at New Hope that are really passionate about creating safe spaces for students. And um, they've seen video games used in not a safe way over and over again. So they're cr inviting us to say, how do we do that in a safe way? That's so cool. we did um, our what we call our showcase. Uh, it's called the Silent Gaming Showcase. We did that there um, uh, in the uh, beginning of summer last year. And basically they let us take over the entire church and we set it up like a zoo. We, had, we invited kids to play games and we didn't put up cages, but it was basically like exhibits where like, <laughs> observe here in this corner, we have five teenagers <laughs> playing Dungeons and Dragons. And they're like, cash fireball. So we literally set it up like a zoo to where like you could, you could observe them. We had cool signage and things. And then, so that was like the foyer. And then in the sanctuary, which is where we do our most of the church things um, on Sunday mornings, in the sanctuary, uh, we lined up that with all of the ministry components of what we do. So the foyer, the foyer, the lobby was all of the like gaming methods we use. So kids playing Fortnite, kids playing Smash, D&D, Tabletop, um, and leaders talking to um, our guests about that. And then inside the sanctuary was like, wh how do we do our Bible studies? What does our discipleship look like? What do our global partnerships look like? And, and that, that was really cool. So we did our showcase there and they just let us use the building, man. They let us like completely take over. So that was dope. Awesome. They're basically saying, we don't know how, so you do it. And then uh, right now we're just talking about, we do after school programs with local schools. And what we sometimes will do is we'll supplement youth ministries with gaming gear. So we'll just bring the gear that we use for after school program. We'll set it up before and after youth group and they use it. So so practical things like that. But um, yeah, they, they, they've said the door's open to do a big community event, um, to do whatever we want um so in that building yeah now i would also say they they're, they're awesome e even when they can't let us use the building or i would say they always would but even when we don't need to use the building they offer other resources uh, be it financial um transportation for young people um just being a voice for gaming culture in the community i would say that's that's them they're advocates for it knowing they don't know how to do it they're like but do it for us, use our space, use all this. So it's it's great. They just need they just need nerds to, to to pick up the hammer and go to work, you know. Absolutely. And the interesting thing is, we so many of us have been there for so long, and but what we know is tech ministry. You know, like you're a nerd, yeah. right? Come, come do the soundboard. You're a nerd, right? Come run our computer or whatever. And that's just kind of uh, what's been happening for so long. Where the Real, reality yeah. is, is that there's like there's so much more that we can be doing, and there's so much more because uh, gaming at its core is a community thing the whole yeah. purpose of it is to uh be able to have people coming and hanging out and getting together and having a good time and so yeah uh, 
being able to empower somebody who's already good at that to teach a church how to do that, that's kind of a big deal. It really is. Yeah, I, I think so. And, and I think like that can be overwhelming. And I think that's where like, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but like that's where like what you are doing and what you're doing at Save Point Ministries, what Silent Gaming is doing, what um, Al at Christian Ninja, what Bubba is doing at LTN, like like what all of us are doing, that's where that kind of comes together, right? So right. what I mean by that is, is okay, so you're you're creating uh, these these safe points, basically making churches or places where you can you can kind of reload, you can you can um, regather, you, you can do that pitch better than I could, but but you you find a church that is willing to have nerds at it, and then um, depending on what that church wants to do, obviously you could provide them with tools, but you can also pull from all of these libraries of information of all these other people that are doing gaming ministry and say, hey. Th- th- all these ministries are interested in helping be a part of that. And you can kind of be like somebody that's connecting all of that. And, and we all really do want to work together. And there's times where like, look, I, if, if I meet somebody in, in, you know, New Mexico or whatever, like I, or, or, or even, even here locally, right. I meet somebody in Portland. Um, I'm, I'm going to introduce them to you. You know what I mean? I'm going to introduce the, the guy from, from Canada to Al. It's not like, yeah, let me try and sneak some SG stuff in there uh, in Canada and, and not tell Al about it. Like, no, I'd be like, dude, I know a guy. Let's let's go. And that's what this is all about, right? Save points, finding out where are all of the locations on the map where there's people already doing this stuff, and how do we get them connected with nerds that maybe would go to church, but don't know that it's a safe place for them. You know, uh, exactly I love it. Exactly that, man. And just like we've been saying before, churches have just sort of like almost. Uh, purposefully neglected this for way way too long so yeah it's really awesome to see more and more churches these days uh getting out there and making sure that they're doing you know more nerd ministry and whatnot yeah hey uh before we move on to the next topic i do want to say thank you to kenny the mage christian ninja queen rook silver soul streams uh, uh atlas Jermango, miss zephels all you guys dropping the follows appreciate you guys so much um oh no i thought i was about to get a uh a three location victory here but thank you so much for the follows we appreciate you guys come on dang it he also had a heimdall in there so uh yeah that's another heimdall dang it i know uh, i'm playing a move deck specifically because my move deck uh repopulates multiple men and there's a challenge right now to fill locations with all four like all four slots and so multiple men really helped me do that but anyway uh, Dude, one thing I want to say about this game real quick is what I like about it is it everything is visually simple and so satisfying, right? Like oh most gosh. games, it's clearly like designed like at this point, this the UI is clearly set up for a mobile experience, right? Yes. Um, but oh, like, on that note, look at this. Um, I'm supposed to be able to scroll through my decks, but I can't on a PC. So what I have to do is I have to go over here and guess around where my deck is. I think it's right there. Yeah. And that's a, that's a, yes, it is absolutely meant for PC. So. That's awesome. You, you mean your your computer monitor is not a touch screen? You just, yeah. yeah. Bro, but it looks so, it, I don't know. It, that's That's the thing, like when you have so many people that make mobile games right now, but when you have uh, like, people know what they're doing make mobile games you're like wow you, you just made something so simple looks so pretty and uh yeah it looks really good kenny the mage welcome man glad to have you here uh so on that note of like the way it looks i'm playing a different deck because this one just has a lot of visually pleasing cards on just like yandu is going to take a card from him and break it and destroy it and so it, he doesn't just go down there and become a card when he flips you see the card pull, get pulled out of their deck his yeah. him, him break it and then Iceman's gonna freeze one of my cards like just the the little animations that this game does to make every card yeah, unique and make every card special in that way is so so good and I am a big well, fan of it and if Yondu is you said he's stealing something what is he doing Yondu takes card do? one of their cards and destroys it so pulls the card so from their deck and destroys yeah. it so he's being a thief, right? He's like living out what it is yeah, that he does. Exactly. Like, I oh, love yeah. that. And everybody yeah. has characteristic stuff. Carnage kills everything in that row and gets stronger because of that. that. doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Carnage? What? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to do my kill. What would Steve do if Steve was a card? Steve, Steve would tell the enemy like, I love you. I love you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, man. Yeah. I would. Let's see. If I had come one, over here, I would take like a random. Exactly, I'd take a random card from their side and pull it over to my side, and just be like, you know, the kill with compassion thing. Like, yeah. hey, come on, yeah. come on over here, guys. Hang Let's out with us over here. Come, yeah. hey, come on. Let's come on. Yeah. 
good. So like Gambit, Gambit's gonna take one of my cards, and he's gonna destroy one of his with it, which is exactly a Gambit thing, and I love it. Okay. Like, yeah, it's so much cool. fun. So. Is Deadpool in here? What does he do? Deadpool, uh, he is a one cost that that is two points strong, but every time he dies, he returns to your hand and doubles his power. So okay. it's just the, the thing where. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, so the more he gets messed up, he's like a Super Saiyan, right? The more he dies, yeah, the, the more stronger he gets. He is. Exactly yeah. that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Oh, that's a smart play in this part. There. Yeah. At least that's it cool. would be a smart play if I didn't have a Shang Chi. <laughs> is there like ranking or anything in this, or is it all just like no yeah. mat, no hidden like matchmaking stat? Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm hoping Shang Chi's about to win this for me. We'll see here. His Sandman cool. might have hurt him more than it hit hurt me. So, uh, okay. But uh, speaking of ministries, let's get back to Satellite. What sort of, what kind of things do you guys do? What sort of ministries do you guys have going on right now? If somebody wanted to connect with Satellite Gaming, what could they do? Yeah, I would say the things that are ongoing right now. So we have programs, we have an events. So a program would be something that's ongoing. Uh, ongoing would be Tuesday nights, we do nerdy Bible study for young people. So it's anything from middle school up through like college age, you know? Pick your own age, I guess, if you're 50 and you pretend like you're a, high school, a college student. We'll never know, but that's kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's online Bible studies on Tuesday nights. We call it The Rift. Um, and we do in-person Bible study uh, on Monday night called The Rift also. Um, and uh, we go to our local space. That's pretty cool. And then uh, the other thing is our after-school programs. We have, um, right now, I think we have like seven or eight. I'm, I'm not sure, but we have like between like 10 to 12 right now that could be functioning if we just had the the, the volunteer capacity the leadership for it. you know coming right back after covid this is like the first time when able to really get those back in full swing so it's been really cool but after school programs yeah those would be the programs and then for events you know it's it's a lot of it is what are other people doing like locally if there's a nerd culture event happening we want to be a part of it um so a lot of times we'll just sponsor nerd culture events you know if somebody has a tournament we're like hey we want to up the ante for that if somebody um needs to borrow equipment they can um you know it, it's kind of anything in the event realm we either run or we are a part of mm -hmm. uh yeah and then uh the, the big thing right now that we're working on which is the third component i talked about right so it's bible studies community and then education the education component is for the next three years we're going to be making 10 trainings a year and those trainings will be based off of needs so you know we're going to meet with parents say hey what do you need what do you want to learn we're going to meet with people like people like you and say so like what would you as you're connecting with all these churches what's like the biggest thing they want to learn right. okay well ltn already has curriculum on that or christian Ninja already has curriculum on that let's just give them those but we're going to stumble across topics that like either we would give from specifically our perspective or fresh topics that there's not a tool for that yet you know um so yeah education that would be another part is just reach out to us and we'll teach you stuff and and that's for pretty much anybody that's in their culture ministry right now i think we're all so passionate about it that we're well equipped to teach even if it's as simple as like hey i don't have any curriculum on it well dude take someone out for coffee and teach them how to better understand their gamer kid right like exactly. it doesn't take yeah. this curriculum tool you know um anybody can do that organically man the, the yeah. whole curriculum thing is something that i know a lot of people are doing right now whether they be uh you know, Christian ministry or, you know, satellite gaming or, or uh, LTN or whatever else. And that's awesome. It's so great that we're all doing curriculum. And, and my point being that that's okay that we're all doing curriculum because yeah. churches need it. You know, there, there needs yeah. to be that curriculum out there right now. Um, yeah. Let me tell you, this is, this is odd. Like, like people that are in Christian circles, they'll hear this and they'll be like, what? Like kind of shocked, but actually like in the heart, they shouldn't be. But like we have two Quaker, Quaker churches right now that are partnered with one of our um, missionaries and they they full on support him and, and love him and they want to learn. They want to know what's up, but they're Quaker churches. And you're like, oh, man, that's like Amish people, isn't it? It's like, well, no, they're not. But historically, <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe you, you might say they're the least expected. But like when you get to the heart of what that what that denomination, so to speak, is, is really about, it's it's beautiful. So um, for them. You know, yeah, we can create a curriculum for them, but also David can just make himself available. Like, sure, do a curriculum that SG made and throw up the banner to this, or just take grandma out for a cup of coffee and tell her some gaming terms that can make her like 
relate more to her gamer kid. Ask, like, tell her, Grandma, here's a challenge. Here's a challenge. Next time you see your grandkid and he's playing Fortnite, ask him to crank some 90s and your kid will <laughs> lose it. He will lose it. Uh, and that you know that, that goes that goes so far, right? So yeah, the mm -hmm. curriculum is a great thing, but we don't always need it. Don't don't rely on it. Don't don't use it as a crutch. Um, we certainly have before, right? We we try to make all this fancy curriculum, and somebody's like, I don't need that. Can you just come hang out with our church for an hour? Like, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I put great work into this, but yeah, absolutely. But Christian Ninja makes a good point. He says there aren't many gamer specific curriculums out there, and basically zero Christian streamer content creator training yeah. programs. Like that is something, man. That second part is something I never even considered. Is hey, do you want to be a Christian content creator? Here's some ways to do that. Here's the basic things you yeah. need, but also here are some of the hurdles you're gonna hit, some of the ways you can get around that. And you're absolutely right, man. That doesn't exist right now. So that's yeah, a, so to go ahead. No, to speak to a few niche things, then right. Just just to say, like w w some things that I know um, is if you want to know about youth, there's a lot of people that could speak to it. But I would say that's like our area of focus. If you want to know um, like general nerd culture education, like LTN. If you want to know streaming, like Christian is literally making that stuff right now. You just mentioned him. He's literally making that right now. And then there's you. It's like, well, then who wants to know this? Well, that's Steve. That, find those people for it. You know what I mean? Like, like literally it all kind of comes together like this, like this, this, this beautiful machine that creates space for when people are willing to, to partner and say like, I don't need to do that. You're already doing it well. Let's do it. So, um, I, there are some great tools that are in the works, um, in that realm, the second sentence you just point out there that he's specifically working on and it's going to be so cool yeah the challenge is finding us working together yeah and it's it's hard to do that right like because we're all different we all we all think differently work differently um but like and we're nerds so like we really like what we like but when we can when we can get together and figure out huh, find a way that clicks that works it's pretty dope man yeah. stuff like this this is cool like jamie's an idiot and can't figure out how a controller works but steve is is a <laughs> god at snap so here we are Gosh, dude. I wish, man. Snap was one of these things where I'll go on like this huge run and I'll gain six levels. And then, oh, because what I didn't tell you is there is a uh, like a, a betting mechanic to it where you level up by using these cubes up here. And every game is worth one cube until the very last turn it, become, it doubles. And... Mm. And then you level up every 10 cubes you get, you level up. Um, during the game though, you can snap and that will double the the amount of cubes that are on the line. Because if you lose, you lose that amount of cubes. So okay. you're, okay. you're pretty confident you can snap and that will make Ooh. four. And then if both people snap, it makes it eight at the end of the game. And so uh, what'll happen to me is I'll go on this tear and just win over and over and over again. And then I will do the exact opposite. I'll just like flop horrifically and lose, lose all exactly of it. As many. Yeah. So I've been floating <laughs> around 40 for this whole time. It's the worst. Like Christian, yeah. one thing about online ministry that's almost always started with an anti-authority, anti-institution mindset, which makes it hard to convince folks to work together, seek accountability, or choose to yeah. become leaders. Oh man, that's so true. And that's one of the things that I think is super cool as I have dipped into this whole Christian content creator side of things is how willing people are to work together. How yeah. many Christians, and I'm going to say that's not universal. I've definitely met some people that are not as willing to work together, but for the most yeah. part, everyone's like, let's work together on this. Oh, you're doing that? Well, then I don't need to do that. I, I want to empower you to do it better. How can I help you do this thing better? And so we all find each other pointing each other towards, like, again, uh, Safe Point's whole goal isn't to be our own community. Our goal is to help other people find physical communities to be in. And so we don't need to build a giant community. If we do, that's great. But we want to empower other people to build big communities and do awesome things and that's just the beauty of working together is we all get to benefit from that that's so awesome yo i just saw in the chat there's somebody from my church that is here kenny what's up dude it's good what's to see up, you kenny the mage glad you're here kenny man. the mage glad you're here. yeah um that's okay. dope what am i gonna play here y'all i think i'm gonna go nightcrawler over here nightcrawler is so sick dude and actually uh, iron heart right there Nightcrawler to me is the most versatile uh, first. Oh, I'm so glad you just played that right now before I reveal my Nightcrawler. He's the most uh, versatile uh, one cost card because he can move. And so if you pump him up, like right now, I got him at a four. And if you can get him even stronger, then you can just move him to where you need him, wherever, you know, at any point. It's really convenient, really nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I want to point out something that Christian Ninja said too. Peer to peer working together, for sure, but mutual submission compromises the struggle. No, it it, mm. it is, and you know, there's uh, part of the global esport movement, which I you know you've attended, um, Christian Ninja, Bubba. Like, there's a lot of us that have been there and been a part of that, and and it, it's hard. You know, it, it's hard because, um, I mean, we can't get into all that, but I think the short version, short version is, um, it's so true the quote that if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together you know mm. um fast and far uh I, I don't know that that's not that's an interesting that's an interesting thing and, and I, I think i think it's a it's a trap we can fall in either trying to go too far one side or the other right there's a healthy healthy balance and um i i think it's it's fun to to watch all of us uh, work on that together. Um, there are a few of us that were in sh shoulder to shoulder with one another over the last few weeks. And you and I live close, so we're shoulder to shoulder all the time. But like, man, I would say that like, man, we've been talking about gaming ministry stuff for years, Steve. Like you and I, have, we've just, 100%. it's been a conversation. And I would say neither one of us were too fast. I would say that's not a problem, right? <laughs> um, but like going slow, thinking about it, and then like maybe there is a time to like crank up the gears and go you know i mean that's what you're doing here with save point ministries is you're like saying okay this is a season now where i am going to move quickly but like you have an awesome accountability structure around you in in your board you have an awesome accountability structure in the fact that you have people that have been doing gaming ministry for a while so like you are saying like yes i'm going fast for this season but i've got these people telling me like when and if i need to slow down and people have told us that with satellite gaming plenty of times and i think that's really really healthy but i'd rather risk going too slow and doing it with people than going too fast and doing it alone at I 10 out of 10 times wholeheartedly yeah. Agree. yeah yeah because if you go too fast and end up skipping an important step or something that might be very useful to uh to your ministry there's nobody there to stop you and say hey don't do that like that's, that's yeah bad. <laughs> well and then it usually if you if you burn a thing, like if you mess up a thing, chances are there was a relationship involved with that thing and you also burnt that relationship. Not to say there's not grace for that and you can't recover from that, but like you, nine times out of 10, not 10 to, I'd say 9.9 .9 times out of 10, when I've screwed something up, I've screwed someone over, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's hard, that's a hard reality to face, but like as a person that is like really good at screwing things up you know like okay simple example i didn't get on the discord call 15 minutes before we got into this because i'm a dope <laughs> and like that's a that's a silly thing to say but but like we probably would have figured out pretty quickly oh jamie's controller doesn't work let's not waste 15 minutes during the call <laughs> trying to get it to work uh you know it, it, like let's let's not have jamie try to tinker with his pc so his pc doesn't crash midway through you know um but but like when i screw things up i screw someone over and and i i want to do that less so i just slow down and think about that yeah christian then just says uh oh change your game category i didn't even think about that thanks man that was uh yeah. <laughs> that's uh, a <laughs> that's uh, uh just we were having some technical issues so we weren't yeah. able to do uh to enable uh, weren't able to do yeah, yeah, I win. Uh, TNMT, but uh, if your launch trajectory is off and you blast forward, you'll be way off once you look back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, to, to use a story from my brother who was just launching rockets with his son uh, a while back, they had nice. a rocket and he went back and he was pushing the button and it wasn't working. And so he pulled the, uh, the note closer to him and the rocket fell over and it was right at that moment when he pushed the button that the rocket actually lit pointing right at him and his son and they had to like scatter out of the way and it's exactly like that exactly the thing with like launch trajectory is if you are not paying attention to your launch trajectory and if you don't have somebody to warn you about that you or somebody else can get hurt in the process and yes it's, so it's just uh yeah a really important thing that's to make sure so that you have that. that's why i've been so thankful for like you jamie and for bubba and for so many other people like you said who have a gaming ministry that they've already set up that i could be picking your guys' brains and chatting with you about these things how do you how have you done this how have you done that and being able to like put those all back together and say okay we can work on this and this is what we need to do because I have the, this uh, accountability of people that are building me up here. So 
Yeah, man. I love that. That's encouraging to me too. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because we've, we've talked about this stuff so much and it can be hard sometimes. Like it can almost feel like, am I discouraging this person by like sharing some red flags or sharing like hurdles we've had to overcome? And it's like, dude, I don't know. Part of me, this is another quote that I picked up recently while I was in on a, on a trip. And hi, Isaac. That's my, that's my pastor. My pastor is in here on the call. That's cool. Oh, We're talking about new Isaac, Hope. Isaac says your hair is on point, man. <laughs> <laughs> thank you sir thank you yeah i've seen it live yes um so th i yeah, that's i appreciate it i appreciate it uh, uh now i forgot what i was saying uh, we were just talking about getting it. too big don't talk about my hair yeah. <laughs> was it oh man well hey as long as uh we're talking with isaac and isaac's in here or whatnot uh we're talking about new hope man uh if you don't know about save point ministries uh, our goal is to help uh, nerds who don't really have a real world community uh, find a nerd friendly church in their area that they can plug into and feel welcome and accepted. And uh, so we're talking about New Hope today with hopes that if there's anybody uh, uh, anybody who is in the Salem area, they can head on over to New Hope and check you guys out. Yeah, it, play with me like a practical scenario of how that might happen. Like, how does a person stumble across Save Point Ministries? How does a person then go like, how do you help the people that are asking themselves like, yeah. man, I wish there was a church that like, had a DD session you know how would they end up at new hope how would they end up at a local church so first and foremost we're going to say peace out christian ninja man thanks for thanks for being here thanks for chatting with us uh, glad you were here so uh we have a threefold uh goal there's our active our passive and our reactive uh strategies so our uh, reactive strategy is at our website savepointministries.com you can go and you can fill out a form that says, I am in this area. We don't want your address or anything. Just say, I'm in this area, this city, and I'm looking for a nerd friendly church. And uh, we will actively go out and start uh, searching the area. I, I personally make phone calls, I do emails, and I try and reach out to churches in your area and just say, hey, are you guys running any nerd ministry? Are you guys cool with nerds? Like, how's that going for you guys there? And then once I find something, I connect people with them. And that's our reactive one. Nerd Friendly Church is the best. It really is because there are churches out there that aren't, right? There are so yeah. many churches out there that are just not nerd friendly. And, you know, if you go and you say, I play Dungeons and Dragons, they're going to ask you, isn't that, isn't that satanic? Or if you're going to say, I play Magic the Gathering. Which like, I'll say this, as a nerd who plays video games and who I love Dungeons and Dragons, I understand that for some people, that's a, a difficult hurdle to overcome, right? So it's not, we're not saying that's like, oh, you're an idiot then. It, well, no. no, no, no. <laughs> and, and so one yeah. of the big things yeah. is we never want to assume that our doctrine is the 100% and all correct doctrine, except for the base doctrine of Jesus Christ, you know, of, of that he is the only way to heaven. He is our, our you know, one true uh, savior. That's it, that's our base doctrine. Other than that, if you're a four square church, that's fine, that's great. Are you a Pentecostal church? Outstanding. Uh, are you Calvinist? Great. Are you open theist? Fantastic. Whatever, man, if you teach the gospel of Jesus Christ and somebody is interested in going to your church, you have yeah. met uh, you have met our goals and we, we are happy i i personally may not 100 percent agree with your doctrine but i am not arrogant enough to say that i know everything about the bible yeah i might be wrong man that's fine so you know what i'm totally fine you know sending people to churches that may not be my 100 percent doctrine but so anyway yeah. that's the the reactive is people come to us and we look for churches uh, we're in the passive right now this is the passive strategy of just streaming with nerdy pastors and hoping that somebody comes by uh, and says oh wait th we're, this guy's streaming with a guy in salem i i'm from salem this literally happened day one i'm streaming with bubba right and so bubba and i are uh, playing a crazy game called happen lance a hilarious game called happen lance and uh I'm telling people about the ministry of Save Points, and uh, and a guy says, "Oh man, a physical community—that's not really an option for me. I live out in the boonies, so online is my only option." And we're like, "Oh, that's too bad, man. We're so sorry to hear that." Anyway, we go on. We'll talking. find somebody, man. <laughs> we go on talking. We go on talking, and then I say, "Oh, you know, my church is hosting a board game day coming up on December 3rd. Oh, by the way, if you don't know, my church is Harvest Christian Church in Troutdale, Oregon." That same dude just goes. Wait, did you say Troutdale, Oregon? Like pops up in the chat. Did you say Troutdale, Oregon? Like, yeah, Troutdale, Oregon. He's like, 
I'm like 20 minutes, half an hour away from you. And I'm like, dude, come to our church. Like we, we would love to have you there. Yeah, we're a dude. Nerd friendly open church. We're gonna be having a board game day. It's gonna be so awesome. And so the dude says he's gonna be at the board game day. And th that's exactly our goal that's with so this. Rad. Is that that whole passive like, hey, you just happen to be That's here. it, dude. Yeah, and then on top of this, all of these streams are gonna end up on a YouTube channel. So if somebody says, hey, I'm looking for a church in Salem, Oregon, I can say, check out this video. This dude's Jamie and uh, his pastor Isaac was in there too. And uh, so, yeah, we'll plug in. Uh, thank you, Isaac. Yeah, well, we're really passionate yeah. about finding that physical ministry. I, like, I love online communities. I really do love online communities. But we at Safe Point personally believe that you cannot replace a real world community. Online yeah. communities do not compare to real world communities. They're great. They don't. They can't replace it. So I then, love using a scripture for that. Actually, see if I could. Um, uh, it's kind of funny if you're not familiar with scripture or with uh kind of biblical context um it, it might be <laughs> no. okay second uh, corinthians 13 12 salute one another with a holy kiss <laughs> okay oh, yeah, yeah um what's interesting about that is we're like no i'm not gonna do that okay <laughs> uh, same sex opposite sex like i'll greet my wife with the holiest of holy kisses i mean don't get me wrong <laughs> but but like when i see a brother at church i'm not gonna be like hey man no no I think what what the author is trying to say is, man, when we get in person, there's something so powerful about that. And there's certain interactions we can only have in that moment. And like, that is an interaction that for us, it's like a fist bump, right? Like be in spaces where you can give one another a fist bump, be in spaces where you can give another one another a hug, like be in those spaces. Um, the two quotes we say is to go from the headset to the dinner table, from the keyboard to the couch, right? Like, like our, our, we meet each other on headsets, we interact with keyboards, but we want to land when we're at the dinner table. We want to land on the couch. Like this last week, I had kids that I met through playing video games. They were, they're now young adults and they were helping me put Christmas lights up. And then we had hot cocoa together, you know, and then they helped me put up my mother-in-law's Christmas lights. And uh, those interactions happened because of the investment that was made on the headset because of the investment that was made on the keyboard. Yeah. Uh, our kind of like um, mission verse, I guess you can say is Hebrews 10, 24 through 26, which is, uh, mm. and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good Amen. deeds, and not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we receive the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. And the whole idea here is the yes, sir. It's about accountability, and the the author of Hebrews is saying, hey, you need to be to have accountability in your life. You need to have people who can uh, support you in that way. Otherwise, you can fall into sin, and that could be a real big problem for you. So, yeah, it's just it, that physical community is a huge, huge deal. So yeah. Agreed. Anyway, there, there, there's the reactive, there's the passive, and then our active strategy at Save Points is uh, uh, to, man, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here and I'm, I'm doing terribly for it. <laughs> um, oh. our, our active strategy is creating curriculum for churches that are things like, here is how to have a video game tournament. Here is ha how to do a uh, to run your own D&D &D campaign. Here's why D&D &D is a game. It's made by Hasbro. People pretend in this way. Here's the psychology behind um, the, the psychology behind uh, suspension of disbelief and why nobody really believes that they're doing magic and whatever else. Like th just helping churches create their own community where someday I would love to make ourselves obsolete. I would love to have created so much stuff and prep churches so many ways that churches are known as the place to yeah. go and get get you know, some nerd friendly stuff. I would love to make ourselves obsolete someday, but that's that's our active strategy is helping churches become nerd friendly spaces on their own. So, yeah. And I think that part right there is probably where a lot of us a lot, a lot of the natural partnerships between these various ministries would, would overlap, right? So like, mm -hmm. for example, we have a community event that we're looking at on the calendar doing sometime in spring, right? And we're gonna host, um, we're gonna host education, uh, education workshops there. That's where we say where students compete and parents learn. And one of the coolest things I can do is have Steve come talk about one of the topics that he's an expert in, right? And then if somebody from LTN is able to come, have them talk about one of the experts there, one of the topics they're an expert in, right? It's not, it's not just me saying like, let's have Jamie stand up in front of people and gab about SG. Like, no, for me, this is not, I love what you said, Steve, because I think it, 
it, it makes sure that our heart is bigger than our head, right? Like, like Absolutely. when our ego gets so big, there's no room for our heart to do any work. And like your heart can never be too big, right? But I think our heads can be too big. We can think too much, but we can never love too much. So I, I, I feel like there is a way for us to say, okay, how do we go forward with this? Knowing that satellite gaming might cease to exist. Like, look, man, after the first kid that I was aware of through satellite gaming gave his life to Jesus Christ, I like cried for hours. I threw my hands up and I said, Lord, if you shut the doors of satellite gaming tomorrow, I will I, I will know that I'm like, dude, well, well done satellite gaming. We never have to do anything again. You've heard that story a thousand times, right? But like now we have tons more stories than that. And I still say like, Lord, if, if satellite gaming ever shuts down, like, Praise Jesus. I won't say we failed. I'll say like, dude, th that what a good race and it's done. I can move on to the next thing. But like we we when we go about doing events and we do education our goal is not let's plant more satellite gaming logos no let's make this more possible what we do more possible and it just so happens that like when we work with an organization in ethiopia which we actively are they're not going to want to use our logo because um they're not going to want to people to know and understand and, and and find that oh we are an active we're an organization that actively preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Um, but when we're, uh, you know, working with a church out of um, maybe Southern Oregon, like or like Eugene, Oregon, that wants to get into their local schools, they m might want to use our logo because they'll want the credibility and say like, hey, in Salem, they're in 12 different schools. So if Salem's cool with it, you guys should be as well, right? So sometimes it makes sense to use our logo. Sometimes it doesn't. And, and someday, if everyone's cool with it, we don't need to exist anymore. And that's cool because satellite gaming can cease to exist. Uh, Save Point Ministries can cease to exist. New Hope Foursquare can cease to exist. But the gospel will never cease to exist. Yeah, and absolutely. we are simply an, uh, we are simply a means to an end. And I'm a hundred percent okay with that. This isn't entrepreneurship. This is this is this is gospel advancement. So. I'm really yeah, passionate absolutely. about that. And that, that's such a huge important part of this is also like creating a space where people want to carry on the things that we're doing because like you said, we may not exist someday and that's fine because you can't stop the gospel. You can't stop you can't stop the signal now. <laughs> you can't stop the gospel. You know, it's always yeah. gonna get out there. There's always gonna be somebody out there trying to, to tell more people about Jesus because uh, we know he wins. So, you know, like I, that's one of the things is, you know, a lot of people out there are like, oh, they're trying to take God out of forever. And that's sad. That is sad. But at the same time, like, hey, God wins. We know this. And it's going to be all right. Yeah. 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 So, hey, we've been neglecting like, chat for a while. We're sorry, guys. Uh, we've got Gurkin still here. I'm typing best, for us. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. The best thing ministry can do is literally create a ministry that can function independent of ourselves and be sustainable without us. Absolutely. Yes, dude. If you can make a ministry that preaches the gospel and succeeds 100% by itself and you get to walk away and do something else, that is, oh, man, that, that's what Jesus did, right? That is exactly what he did with the, uh, the disciples. You got the 12 yeah. disciples and well 11 but then paul so 12 apostles and uh he he created people who would carry on his message and so yeah it's a big deal man it's awesome yeah oh man it's good yeah it's, good. it's funny we're talking about gaming ministry but but in that like what i love is there's so much of this that is just it's just the straight up the gospel right like like mm -hmm. 50 years ago, this conversation was happening with like footballs and soccer balls. Like, soccer is <laughs> evil. They have uh, hexagons on them. Ah! You know? And now we're like, hey, man, let's play some D&D. &D. And people think we're like literally turning each other's into newts. I'm like, no. <laughs> we are, I don't know how to do that. I, I, that's so I, funny, man. If I could, I might do it to Steve every now and then. But yeah, that's I, fair. I call it be cool. <laughs> Go chill in your koi yeah. pond for a while. You treat your koi yeah, pond dude. real nice. I'd be a newt in your koi pond, man. She turned me into a newt. A newt. I got better. I got better. <laughs> Okay, uh, gaming ministry. So we've been talking a lot about gaming ministry, and I'm sure we will keep talking about that because you and I, we could talk about ministry literally forever. Oh so my gosh, uh, yeah. really though, hey, let, let's, let's shift gears here just a little bit. What are you playing right now, man? What are you playing? Uh, what sort of games you into? Oh, man. What's going on with you? Uh, League of Legends, I feel like is one that's kind of always there-ish. Um, I've been playing Team Fight Tactics. Um, Team Fight Tactics. I tried getting Steve to try it, and it's not a game that's for everyone. Like, it's really not. I would say like there's a massive learning curve. There's a lot there. I'm glad you tried it though. Um, 
but uh, TFT Suite, uh, just some mobile games. Like, dude, I'm a sucker for Raid Shadow Legends. No shame. Love that <laughs> game. Um, no plugs, promise. But if you are going to start, make sure you use my friend code because I get cool rewards for it. Um, <laughs> like, what's funny is that's, like, not even a joke. I can't stand when I tell someone about about a game that has, like, a friend code system. And they go and download the game. They're like, hey, I tried it. I'm like, no, you're supposed to tell me first. Now it knows you downloaded it, so I don't get rewards. You know, it's so dumb. Um, I, I tried yeah. to play Team Fight Tactics, so I got it on the phone, and uh, it was pretty good. It was all right, you know, but um, legitimately what it was for me was it was a little bit tough to parse out what was going on on my phone screen. It was just, I, I sound yeah. like such an old person. You right can now also play it on PC, though. So yeah. you can play it on PC if you have League of Legends already. You have to own League of Legends, or not own, but you have to have League of Legends. You have to download, download it, yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I was like, oh, I downloaded Team Fight Tactics. And it's like, oh, do you want to play with League of Legends? And I'm like, is there another way? And so I started downloading League of Legends. And for whatever the install, I've got um, like gigabyte internet. So I, like the, the download was lightning fast. The install was taking forever. I had no oh. idea why. My wife and I watched a 45 minute show and it was 20% through at the end of it. And I'm like, what oh is going gosh. on here? So I don't know if it, it, the, the file got downloaded incorrectly or what, oh, but maybe. for whatever reason, the install was just not happening. And that's, that's finally when I messaged you and I'm like, I'm sorry, man, this ain't gonna happen. So. Yeah, like <laughs> if you loved it, I would say it was worth the wait. But if you don't, you're like, eh, nah, nah. <laughs> So uh, Atlas, I had to reinstall League recently on my new PC, and it was the same issue. Yeah, it takes a That's minute. Weird. I don't know why, man. Yeah, it's bonkers. Yeah. So. Um, what else have I been playing? You know, I, I don't know. It's it's. I, I will say this. This is this is a little plug for something I'm doing. Um, it's it's a personal thing that I did last year, and I'm. Uh, it's about the topic of fasting actually it's about what am i playing well, what am i not playing that's 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 the real question i'm asking myself right now and as a gamer as someone who's extremely passionate about video games um i i need constant reminders in my life that i love jesus more than i love video games i know that right like i know that but like i want to be i want to actively live that out so what i started doing was in january it's really common in the christian circles to do like a uh, some sort of a fast from january 10th to january 21st i don't know if that's something you've seen or been a part of steve no. but um i started doing something that is uh that is what i call press pause and for 21 days i don't play video games and if i do i, I allow myself to play like one mobile game at night while i'm going to bed mm -hmm. and um it's been last year steve it, it changed my life it, it really changed my life so i'm inviting people to to think about that be a part of it and like there's no there's no organizational attachment it's more like just kind of movement like hey be a part of it if you want don't be if you don't want to um not really tracking it you know it's just hey i, I, I i've invited a few people and they said like wow that's that's something I really want to do. So um, I think that I would actually encourage anybody that's engaged heavily in a hobby, if it's sports, do, do nothing with sports for 21 days. Just focus on Jesus. If it's reading, read no books for 21 days. Whatever you find to be something that could distract you from Jesus. For some people, like, like a lot of us, we're like, man, in 2023, I'm working out, baby. Going to the gym, get yoked. Yo, some people, maybe they should take a 21 day break from the gym and just only walk and listen to their to scripture or devotional. You know what I mean? So for me, yes, that's what I'm playing, but I'm also going to be actively not playing for 21 days here coming up. That's, so. a, that's the purpose of fasting, right? You know, you have this yeah. whole mindset of, I, this is something that I strongly desire and am, you know, I guess with real fasting, food fasting, you need, yeah. you don't need video games or whatever else, but yeah. there is this whole uh, thought process of... Uh, it's, it's like a, it's, it's like a, a, the whole point of like, it's, it's like a sacrificial thing, right? It's yeah, something yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, I would, I would still encourage like food fasting in some way, shape or form. But sure. again, that's, that's something that has really blessed me. So yeah, so, what I'm not like playing. The, you're kind of into like that, uh, <laughs> yeah. competitive strategy type game then? Yeah. Yeah. I would say like, I, I really like competitive games. Um, and I don't, there was a season where like, okay, like if I want to climb a ladder, I'm going to play Halo and I'll, I'll like climb to the top and I will love it. It'll be fun. I, I've done it with every Halo and I, like it's super Pro fun. You're like Halo, right? 
Like, yeah, I've gotten like I've had opportunities to compete with Halo. Um, I used to play with like top tier players, and that was really fun. Um, even recently, when Halo Infinite, uh, in a little over a year ago, when Halo Infinite came out, I would queue up with all the professionals because um, that was the rank that I was, and it was really cool. But um, to a point now where like. I play League of Legends and I'm not professional at that, so um, I just play with a bunch of people that get mad at each other and I usually turn off chat, <laughs> turn off my mic and just zone out and usually either have a really good game or a really bad one. <laughs> That's why games like that where people get really serious and into it, I never was able to get into because I, 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 I love video games, but I don't love video games for the competition. I love either strategy like games like this where i can think of like you know make myself feel smart because of the yeah. things i did oh yeah or oh yeah narrative narrative is a huge one for me where uh, if the story is something that's moving I i'd say like people talk about oh you love video games and you love dnd and you love books like wow you love all these things and i'm like no really my passion is narrative good story mm. is something i'm passionate about and it can be delivered okay. in a lot of different ways okay okay i'm gonna ask about this one then bro have you played I Am Setsuna? No, I think I've heard of that. What is oh. I Am Setsuna? It is, it is uh, like a like a, like a modern take of. Uh, eh, no, it's not modern take. It is like Chrono Trigger in its play style and combat. Um, there, for the soundtrack, there is one instrument and it's piano, and it gives me chills even thinking about it. It's beautiful, and the whole story is about sacrifice, and it is crazy dude like like one of those games you could play and be like bro this could have totally been written by like like c.s lewis you know what i mean they're like dude like i could take so many spiritual metaphors from this and it's beautiful so um yeah yeah i would say I if you're thinking about a game Setsuna. check it out bro yeah i'm yeah, Setsuna, yeah. it's so good a walking simula simulator used to be a bad uh, terminology but these days it's more just like the narrative focused games where there's no actual gameplay you're just walking mm. to the next part of the story I actually really yeah. enjoy those. Like, I have no problems with games like that as long as they tell a really good story. So, is yeah. that the Thor from Fortnite? I don't know. Is it? I don't play Fortnite. Again, if it's competitive, <laughs> I don't really play it anymore. So, there he is right there. Marvel Snap uses the Thor from Fortnite skin for its art on the main page. <laughs> then, uh, oh, man. So Kenny saying, Kenny Link, playing WoW. <laughs> yeah, playing WoW. Man. <laughs> WoW's another one. I actually, uh, I got really into WoW in... 2006 i think okay literally it was wow vanilla and then um i got into it when the the blood elves uh, the burning burning crusade hit. yeah bc yeah the, the very first expansion was like all right all right i'll try it out and because uh, i worked i was a manager at gamestop at the time so we got it free and so i went and i tried it out and i got real real into it for a while so yeah. that's cool bro <laughs> I, so I played WoW like since vanilla, and I I stopped like after like toward the end of Wrath of Lich King, and dude I loved it. It was so fun, um, and I I think I mean I I'd, I'd consider like playing it again. I really would. Um, like what's what's interesting about it is I'd spent so much time playing it, so much time being invested in, it, and then like you'd want to start another character right but then you gotta go through this whole process of like grinding and leveling them up but then if you use like a pass where you get to like max level immediately then you have no idea how the character works right so there's like a lot of lessons in like growth and in development and, I, and I, I like that but like man there's something about that game that was just so so cool but i remember a moment where bc came out uh burning crusade it was the first expansion and i actually had to have a hernia operation when that game launched so I was I was like one of the highest level Drenai, which is a race that had just come out. I was one of the highest level Drenai on our server uh, for like the first like I don't know like two weeks. But then when I recovered from my surgery and I went back to school, I fell off of that so fast. But I just <laughs> sat on my laptop, couldn't do anything, couldn't go anywhere, and it was like probably the most gamer mode I was in my entire life. But mm -hmm. it was cool. Yeah. Gurkin Steel saying that so they had to quit WoW, took up all the time spend money to level the characters yeah it is one of those things where you got to be wise with your time right you got to know exactly what's happening and, and what are you are uh, what you are and are not struggling with hernia are you 59 uh uh dj raintree i've had two hernia issues my first one when i was 17 years old and my second one when i was 28 years old it's 
Yeah. <laughs> I've had one hernia operation and uh, multiple colonoscopies, and I'm 34. Yeah, Let's yeah. just say, like, the bottom half of this guy is, like, just is not in good shape, man. The colonoscopies <laughs> were elective, though, as uh, he asked, so. I did not know. I did not. No, I did not, Steve. Where's the end button? No. Okay, yeah. what do we got here? That's funny, though. That's funny, though. I'm going to put that right there, I think. Yeah. Oh, card is just death. That's nice. That's nice. Awesome. So, yeah, medical procedures are medical procedures, man. They just yeah, bro. They happen. You got you to do them sometimes. It's just the way it works out. <laughs> the highlight of my year. No, it is not the highlight of my year. That's fine. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Steve. This is great. I know, right? You brought it up, man. <laughs> hey, no. It's fair. It's fair. It's fair. No, I've been playing. Uh, I mean, speaking of narrative, I've been playing a lot of God of War. Uh, Ragnarok, which okay. this game, man, is so good. It's the gameplay of the first one, almost exactly, almost copy and pasted. I heard that. But, Nathan told me that. But with the, uh, which is a good thing, because the gameplay of the good one is a, is a spectacular. The first one is spectacular. Okay. But um, on top of this, the combat arenas they have played with a little bit instead of just you know you walk into an open room and like you know the classic gaming thing where you're 10 steps away and you look at it you're like oh that's a combat arena i'm gonna go in there and get in a fight you know just the way it what's works. a combat arena is that like pvp no just like uh like when you're walking to uh, through a video game and you just see a big open room oh okay and you're like oh i'm gonna get in a fight in there that's a boss room or that okay. that's gonna be a place yeah. where you know something, something's gonna happen there so uh anyway this one, it actually plays with these arenas a little bit more where you, uh, yeah, it, Gergish was saying they blindside you with combat now. You'd think it's like being blindsided with combat, but really they just hide these rooms a lot better, play with elevation a lot more, and uh, allow you to, uh, to, uh, dang nabbit, what am I doing here? I'm gonna do this and this, I think. Allow you to like, zip line up here and to you know leap over there and to you know you know kind of really be flying all over the place and it's super fun like the, the combat has gotten real real like unique in that way so it's sick because they literally have zero cut camera the entire game it's all one shot filmed yeah the, the first game was like that too where it's all a long shot there's no camera cuts in the entire game wow that's interesting hmm, i'd have to see that, that that's cool so the the one of the most impressive design things that they've done is you are going between realms on what's called the world tree and so okay. every time you have to travel between realms you have to traverse this world tree and they have made you traversing the world tree they've hidden uh see you later isaac thanks for being here man we really appreciate you yo uh, isaac love you buddy thanks for coming to hang out they've hidden load screens with that there's no there are zero okay. load screens in this game unless you die and you have to reload in there are zero load screens it's all uh you traversing this world tree and that's them loading the next area and it's this super unique way of kind of like they're saying uh that there's no uh no camera cuts it just keeps going right it's really well done it's super fun that way that's too cool that's too cool. I, I have to see that. I think that's 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 fun. And I think that's like a lot of games are carried. Like I feel like their uh, cinematography is carried by cuts, right? And also their game optimization, right? Oh man, what do we what do we do here? Let's just do a cutscene to, you know, to shift some things around. It's like no, man, you gotta you gotta focus really on cinematography and optimization to pull that off well. And it sounds like they do. That's yeah, cool. It's great. It really, really is. Uh, Wandering Knight, see you later, man. Yeah, these VODs end up at uh, Save Point Ministries uh, on YouTube. So uh, youtube.com slash Save Point Min, I think. Oh, maybe we don't have our own URL yet. I think you have to have a certain amount of followers to get our own URL. Anyway, youtube.com slash Save Point Min is where a lot of these are. And uh, you can come check us out. We uh, love your support, man. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, so, hey, speaking of support, everybody here, uh, just so you guys know, you know, it's uh, Giving Tuesday. Just thought you guys, you know, Satellite gaming for Save Point Ministry is something that you're thinking about at all. You know, it's getting Tuesday. Mm. Just, just saying oh, yeah. this <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, dude, like, I think people are going to give somewhere. Like, people are generous. Like, I think we underestimate and don't realize how generous people are. Um, one thing that was really eye-bunning for me after Giving Tuesday one year was, uh, 
I was at a, so I have a buddy that does like storage wars, right? Like full time. He's uh, been a contributor to SG for a while now, partnered on our champion team. And, and dude, he, he, he was, he had his shop open one day and I went in there hanging out and he introduced me to a guy and he was like, oh yeah, this guy does nonprofit, like gaming ministry stuff. And he's like, nonprofit? He's like, dang, dude, why didn't I know that a week ago? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, at the end of the year, our accountant told us we had to, you know, give some money if we wanted to like, you know, use it well, because otherwise it would just, X amount of it would just go to taxes or we could just give it to somebody we want, you know? And mm -hmm. so I don't mind paying my taxes, obviously, but I'd rather give it to people like I, I, I want to help. He was like, so the, after we heard that, the first commercial with a crying cat on it, my wife said, that's who we're giving $5,000. And I was like, <laughs> God, come on, come on, man. Those, those what, are the people uh, right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it's like people, are... people just... They want to know, right? Yeah, they heard that song and just wept, you know? And it, it's, <laughs> hey, man, somebody needs to save the cats. I get it. That's beautiful. Um, but, like, I, there's there's a lot of people that, like, they want to give intentionally. And don't rob them of that opportunity by being too scared to talk about, you know, giving opportunities. People really like it. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, DJ Ranger, Giving Tuesday works like camp, right? Uh, you mean that when you give, we're going to do something crazy? Jamie said that he would shave his head uh, if you uh, if you give a, a dollar. Fifty thousand dollars. There you go. Fifty thousand dollars. Twenty five k to SG. Twenty five k to uh, to Save Point Ministries. I, I'll, I'll shave my head too. Yeah. We will both shave our head for that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Bubba yeah. says waxes. He waxes armpits. I do. I do that. <laughs> I'd wax my armpits for a hundred dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> a month? <laughs> yep, hundred dollars a month, man. Nothing woof, less. Woof. Nothing less. Yeah. Uh, Kenny the Mage, thank you for posting our YouTube link. He found it on there, uh, YouTube.com, and then all that other stuff there. Yeah, you have to have a certain amount of followers to be able to uh, to get your own URL on YouTube. I want to say it's like a hundred or something. And obviously, we just launched last week. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Jamie, I need you to pick a deck for me. So Pick a deck. on reveal, ongoing, destroy, move, discard, negative, add cards, annoy, or kill them. I've been playing the kill them and the on annoy. reveal and the move a lot. Annoy? Annoy. Annoy yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah, that's like yeah. me. It, uh, it, it pretty much is uh, inner thigh for a hundred. Wax your inner thigh for $125. I'd do it. I'll do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go get some wax. <laughs> So my annoy deck is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a bunch of cards that are, they're not great, but they're genuinely annoying. And the real hope is that my opponent just retreats because I annoy them so much, so. Gherkin Shields, he says he wants to see you in uh, Pigtails, Jamie. No, thanks. Um, <laughs> no, Pardon no. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do like a braid or like like Viking braids and stuff. That'd be dope. But like pigtails, ugh. I might do that. Like my wife might do that as a joke. But posting that stuff, man. Mm. <laughs> Icky. Icky. Yeah. There's some cool like Viking stuff that I'd like to do. That'd be rad. Yeah, Viking yeah. braids would be pretty cool. You got to grow out a big beard too, though. You know, get that real full Viking look going. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I have like the Johnny Depp hair where like I, there's certain spots I just can't grow it, and I actually am okay with that. I, I like I like the way it grows in, um, but when I, I, it's it's really awkward to like maintain because there's too many little spots that don't grow it. So I've got to be like when I maintain it, I could probably make it look pretty sweet, but I don't want to. You know, I, I don't know. I don't want to put in all that work. Like I'm just like eh, whatever. Every once yeah. in a while, I'll just yeah, whatever. <laughs> Get rid of it all. Whatever, man. It's good. Cool. Yeah. I spent a lot of time maintaining my my hair on top of my head. I don't also want to spend time maintaining the hair on my face. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Of course, of all the things, seventy-five percent chance of killing something that I wanted, and you killed the one thing I didn't want. Oh, that's so How sad. Dare you? <laughs> it's, it's it's hard. Okay. Sometimes I love so the <laughs> like the UX, like the the interactions, the experience, like. When you the the way the buttons again, just all the subtle animations are dope. Yeah, like even it that, really the is. Blue wavy stuff, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is yeah. Professor X has locked down this location. He won't. Uh, do okay. Anything else. I think I'm gonna lose this. Dang it! I didn't pull any of my higher cost cards. I got nothing over this four here. Um, what do I want to do here? I think I retreat. I'm still sorry we didn't get a play. Uh, Ninja Turtles, man. Ninja my heart, Turtles, my I know. Well, hey, we're sorry <laughs> for sorry, the chat, too, guys. I don't know. 
For what it's what worth, that? I would have retreated. Yeah, good call, Bubba. Good call. Uh, yeah, we're sorry to the chat too, though. Sorry, chat, that we are yeah. uh, that we didn't get to play uh, Ninja Turtles. It was uh, just some computer issues on Jamie's end. Uh, he's still struggling figuring out these whole uh, computers. And, yeah, uh, what is computer? <laughs> I, I figured out what it is, is yes, it was 3.0. So then I started using a 3.0 jack. My computer was registering that it was plugged in. It was getting powered, but it wouldn't connect. So then I text Jess and I say, can you bring me a 3.0 controller? And then when I went to plug it in, my whole computer just froze. Well, then I restarted the computer, used this cable that was just a, a newer cable, and then it worked. Like it was, what's crazy is I have a, like, a, I have a really nice machine that somebody built for me um and gifted to me and i just don't know how to use it i'm not worthy like i I'd, honestly if i had a potato things would probably go more smooth because <laughs> there'd be less stuff that i have to know it's ridiculous that is, i'm in the same boat where somebody built this pc for me and it's like this piece of a machine and then every once in a while it just has like for example it does my for whatever reason and this is a, apparently a common uh, issue with um with no i'm not gonna because then he might just play a kill It's okay, I decided everybody. But um, <laughs> it does not agree with the Microsoft Store or the Xbox app. And the, so the oh. Microsoft Store is incredibly slow. Like to play Ninja Turtles, it took me five full minutes to open the app, search for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then click play. The, that the, all of those took five minutes to do because it works so slow but it worked yeah it worked right Bubba that's the point of the deck is annoying it's the point working that they retreat it worked but at least that works the Xbox app will not open on my computer I don't know why it just Wait, yeah. it does not open I've uninstalled and reinstalled 150 times but I've like you know googled it checked the reddit whatnot apparently it's a rare but not uncommon issue so yeah that's funny. Okay, uh, I have... Uh, see, now I have to play this because... Hey guys, one, two, or three. Where should I play Electra? Quick chat, quick. One, two, or three. Uh, three, 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 three. Oh, chat. I'm not chat. Three? I'm Jamie. Well, chat's being too slow. Three, Bubba says three, hold it. Three, three. No, because Bubba, if I hold it, then I don't draw a card next turn. Because it filled my hand and I want to be able to Yeah, draw Bubba plays this game too. That's, That's right. right. I forgot. Yeah, too late. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Kenny. Jamie told Stole me your to. thunder. Okay. Oh, cool. We got Professor X now, which is a good way to lock down a location on turn five. Colossus is sweet, dude. Colossus is cool. He can't be moved. He can't lose power and he can't be destroyed. And so he's just kind of a good utility card to have in, you know, decks that are fine. Like this deck is fine. Again, the real hope is I, I annoy them to the point. What? That is the coolest. Yeah. I, Another thing is that is... you can also do this. And you can like compliment cards. Counting is for losers, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Here, have a green goblin. You know what everybody wants in their life? A green goblin. Enjoy. I I R L. I R L. I R L. Yep. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh no! Um, I'm an absolute idiot. I, I knew that was gonna happen. That's why he put Bucky Barnes there. That's the point of Bucky Barnes is to destroy him. I'm sorry. See, chat. This is what happens when I'm like most. Uh, streamers that I watch that play Snap are better when they stream. I'm worse because I like the conversation. <laughs> I'm here trying to talk and it's distracting me. So, I'm sorry. What is it? What is it that happened? Bubba said he literally said thank you out loud. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I gave him a card that gave him negative three points, but it was on the spots of a different card that gets stronger if you destroy it. So. I oh. know that he wanted to destroy the cards in that spot. I should have known that, and yet I get I gave him a, a card. But that's okay. I just oh. destroyed it anyway. So. Oh, good job. Take good that. job, Steve. Okay, you can only play one card a turn right now. Um, I don't know if chat if you've seen the past infinity level. That's what these sparkles are. When you get past the infinity level, I have one card like that. Ooh, Winter Soldier looks cool. Yeah, Winter Soldier is super cool. Uh, I'm gonna drop Professor X right there just to make sure that I lock. You know what I was going to say about Colossus is uh, I like to draw 
Drawing Colossus or like Winter Soldier is a really good way to practice because you practice anatomy, but you also have to practice like drawing different textures, right? So like if all you're doing is sketching like with a with a piece with a pencil and you're not coloring, I mean even if you are coloring, how do you make stuff look shiny, right? Like mm -hmm. like it's really it's it's really something that like takes time to learn. It's just texturing. So I really like that. And um I think that's like one thing that's awesome about like fantasy stuff is like we always see people right throughout the day we see people but when you're looking at fantasy and you want to draw something that's fantasy like you don't see a you know a hobbit every day or an elf every day so like, you can do creative things and, and rather than people going like that anatomy seems a little off what you're actually saying is like that's what it's supposed to look like <laughs> you know so um it's it's pretty fun but colossus and and uh like the winter soldier with his arm and even that like that clothing right there on thor it makes it it makes it so like yes you're you're following the rules of like normal humanoid anatomy but you're also having to like alter the texturing a little bit it's pretty dope random thought yeah. but and then especially because they have so many like lines in their arms and whatnot and so getting all of those exactly the way you want them has got to be wild yeah also. and you have to because you have to the, the lines go with the shape of the bicep and the like the back and stuff so like shape and form it makes it so like you like when you when you do 3d modeling there's like a grid underneath everything right like they're polys and it helps like you have to draw out each poly and each component and it's really actually it's really really good practice um random random thought i i love if that's what I think of whenever I look at like comic themed things or like superhero themed things. I'm just like, how could I draw that? Um, but yeah, chat, that's... you guys, anybody draw out there? Any, any artists in the chat out there? I used to draw yeah. anime stuff back in the day. Oh, Not nice. So much anymore. Yeah, I love it. Um, yeah, we'll do that. This is my negative deck, so all of my cards here are very expensive but have very low power. And then Mr. Negative is a card that swaps the power and cost of all of your cards. And oh, so cool. The unfortunate part is that he is a four cost card. So you usually don't get him before turn four. Uh, I haven't drawn him at all right now. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. I draw on Gotcha Games. What is Gotcha Games? What, what, does that mean anything? Yeah, so Gotcha Games would be like, like anything where you you buy oh like gotcha like, games got it got yeah, it, got it. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 like genshin raid yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it means Wrong. he has a gambling addiction <laughs> <laughs> man yeah gotcha games are one of the things that i have actively not gotten into because i know that would not go well for me okay i need to pull mr negative here everybody just say mr negative out loud mr negative mr negative okay i gotta pull him right here this deck does nothing it's got to happen right now. Steve's all about yes. the high okay. variance okay. plays. That means that on turn six, at least, I can just kind of drop everything on this guy. Sweet. I can empty my hand on this dude. Oh, wait, no, because he doesn't do my hand. Oh, no, I needed him last turn. Dang it. Oh, well. That's fine. Do you we'll lose see what now? Happens. I might lose now. We'll see. Don't lose, Steve. That's okay. You know what? Sometimes you lose, <laughs> and it's because you're a loser. And you know what? Sometimes I'm a loser. And that's okay. Uh, let's see what Jubes pulls for me here. Jubilee. Emery Atlas. Give me some good. Oh, this might be bad news for me. Don't. Dang it. Nope, that's it. No matter what, he wins this. Dang. <laughs> Atlas, oh, you should Iron send Man, me that, that video. One, that's a real good pull for me right there. <laughs> Am I gonna, oh, and he takes it. He takes it, yes. <laughs> Negative deck for the win. <laughs> oh man, I barely pulled that one out. That was 100% luck, chat. I did nothing but got super lucky there. Sorry, Jamie, I just got really excited. No, I, I was into it. I was looking at it. I was yeah. looking at it. So I, I I'm trying to card. understand it. I pulled a card that doubles my power in that spot. And okay. usually he is a five cost card with zero power. Because what he does yeah. is he doubles everything else. But with Mr. Negative, he is a five power card that doubles everything. And so mm. I just got a huge boost to power in this spot. And then on top of that, I play Ironheart, which gives picks three random cards to give plus two. And it was just enough okay. to kick me over right here to make to make me winning this one. So Yeah, yeah so your your uh 
your opponent, Mr. Splat there, is also uh, probably crediting you to luck, right? Oh, 100%, it was luck. That yeah. was absolutely a fact. I mean, it was luck in as much as this deck is made to be lucky. So, nerds experience yes. a special level of excitement. That's a fact. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. Uh, Gurkenshield. In Orlando, I met a lady whose dad is like the VP of microtransactions and gambling for some major mobile company. She had no idea that kids used it. Yeah, it's really rough. Um, there are some countries that it's illegal to have uh, like either blind boxes or booster packs or uh, what, what's the one in video games it's called? Um, uh, loot crates? Loot crates, thank you. Loot crates, yeah. things like that because they consider it gambling. And yeah. uh, so that's one thing that I, I told you, I work at a local game store and um, it gets kind of wild sometimes, y'all. Like people will come in. The other day I had a, a, a dad and his son come in and he worked at, uh, like he was a truck driver. So he was only in town every little once in a while. Dang it, man, I am not pulling, um, I am not pulling Mr. Negative. Well, I have to do that. Uh, he uh, was only in town every once in a while with his son. And whenever he was here, he and his son, he would say, we buy magic cards. That's what we do mm. for fun. That's our thing. Or not magic cards, Pokemon cards. And uh, he said, yeah, we have spent $20,000 on Pokemon cards uh, this, this year. And I'm like, you know, as, as an employee, I just have to be like, oh, that's super cool. Good for you guys. But uh, I'm donate to Save Point Ministries. <laughs> yeah, no joke, right? No joke. Why did he just play that? Thing? That was weird. But uh, so he buys an entire box of Pokemon cards, and they open it, and they think it's super cool and fun and whatnot. But then. Uh, they they open it all and then they're like you know what let's get another uh let's get another box and so they buy a second box right there and they just sit and they open the whole thing spend 300 dollars on cards just right there for funsies just wild wild stuff oh wow oh, man oh uh oh oh no oh, that was brilliant oh i gotta i gotta oh, i still win but that was still very smart Wow, I can't believe I won that one. So, anyway, but it's an investment. Yeah, that's so many thoughts. Or, I had a guy come in once. Again, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's things called collector's packs in Magic the Gathering. And they're more expensive packs, but there's a lot more rare slots. Uh, you're guaranteed, like, foil rares. You're, it's just obviously a better investment, quote-unquote. And uh, a guy comes in, and he's looking at our cards, and he says, do you know anything about this stuff? And I'm like, yeah, actually, I do. What can I do? He's like, well, what's... What's the best purchase for my value here? And I said, well, honestly, these collector's packs are gonna be the best for your value. I have, I have uh, only once ever seen somebody not pull their value from that. Of course, value being what it's worth, you have to sell it to get that. But anyway, yeah, it's like, yeah. cool, cool, give me one of those. And so he buys it and uh, he opens it and he gets through about three cards and he looks at me, he looks at the cards and says, I don't know what these are here, you do it. And I'm, I grab the, uh, I grabbed the, the cards and I flipped through and he pulled like a $150 card. And I'm like, dude, this card's great. Like, this is a top-notch card right here. He's like, oh, cool, awesome. Give me another one. And so I go and he buys another one and he hands it to me and says, here, go ahead, open it. And I open it and I flip through and he pulls another like $110 card. And I'm like, yeah, this is a huge, huge, like you're, you're pulling some really good stuff. He's like, give me two more. And so I went and I bought two more and I go through all of them and I tell them, and this, this time I was like, ah, oh, you know, you did pretty well this time. You made your money back. You know, you got about you know, $80 between the two. And he's like, ah, oh, cool, cool. Well, do you know where I could sell these? And I said, yeah, we have, you know, our other shop, we have two stores, our other shop uh, buys magic carts. And he's like, cool, thanks, see you later. Uh, that was it, it was the weirdest thing. Like, it, again, he, he was in it for- Did he have a camera? <laughs> I know, right? It was so weird. It was so, so weird. So, yeah. Atlas saying, uh, I like this YouTuber called uh, M. Tashed. He was a big Genshin content creator who used to spend thousands on the game. He went free to play after hearing about how people were getting... Uh, oh. 
People were getting hooked on essentially gambling because of his content. He no longer wanted to support such a predatory system. It really, really is. Like, it can get real predatory and real rough. It's unfortunate, but um, it happens. And that's why when people say, like, yeah, make booster packs, make blind purchases illegal, part of me is like, I could see that. I could, you know, or not mm. make it illegal, call it gambling and make it 18 and older. And I don't, yeah, I, I could see yeah. that. I, I could see I, that being a thing. I think where I, I think where I, cause look, I have, I have similar feelings. I think where there's an interesting line, that, a differentiating line from gambling in that is like, okay, um, let's use like CSGO for an example. CSGO, you can buy things on CSGO, then you can sell them on Steam, or I don't know if you can anymore, but there was a time where you could sell them on Steam for actual money, right? Um, Diablo 3 did that for a while, when basically they made it so the game was pay to win. You can still do that. Okay. When With Genshin Impact, you can't sell an individual character after you draw it. With Raid Shadow Legends, you can't sell an individual character after you draw it. So, like, you are purchasing uh, something that is based off of RNG, but in my mind, it's not gambling because there's literally no monetary return. You're just buying random numbers, right? right? So to me, it's like, is that worth it for you? You just have to determine the value of that for yourself. So like the value is like, what is this worth? Meaning what could I sell it for? Well, with games like Raid Shadow Legends and, um, and Genshin Impact, where against their terms of service to sell an account, it, and you can't transfer your units to a different account, it's not worth any monetary value. It's only worth what you still think it is. Right. Um, so, yeah, unless you're a content creator making thousands back after you're spending it, I think you can probably say a big majority of people aren't <laughs> said content creators. Yeah, yeah, and then even then, it's like, you, you're a content creator of, like, RNG. You're not, like, I just wouldn't call it, I think I have a hard time calling it gambling unless you can make return on it. Like, let's, let's, I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying that, but, like, I, that's why I think, like, I don't think solving the problem is calling it gambling. Like, that's actually, that's a hot take. But like, I, I actually, I think calling it gambling is a disservice because it distracts from what it really is. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of detaching people from their, like Jacob said earlier. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. I did it. Did the IRL thing. Um, like a person in chat said earlier, um, it's a, it's a detachment from, it's because we're using our real names. So I'm like in that mode. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, buddy. Um, but it's like, it's a detachment from like our wallets, right? Like it, it's, it's a weird psychological thing, but it's, I don't see it as gambling. Yeah. I, I try not to see it as gambling, but spending one buck potentially get a character consider. Yeah. Like it's RNG. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, gamble to get good accounts and then sell them to people. Yeah. But like, that's, that's illegal, right? That to me, yeah. that's like, that's like you, that's against their terms of service. Yeah, so, to do um, that. Yeah. That, that yeah. is essentially Wizards' arguments against this is we are not telling people buy this and you never know what's going to happen. You might win big. We tell people you're going to get 15 random cards with which you can play Magic the Gathering. That is yeah. exactly what they're purchasing, exactly what they know they can get. We are not telling them in any way, shape, or form anything else. We say yeah. you will buy 15 cards or you know 12 cards Ooh. or whatever the pack is. And it'll make you that much, uh, or and it will you will get that many cards to play the game with. That's it. So if it's not gambling. Okay. You get so exactly take, what we tell you. Take the idea of like a Toyota Celica, right? A car. We're gonna talk car for a second. Like that's a car that you can buy and you can soup up if you want, you know. And, and a lot of times, like I use Celica for a reason, right? Like you can have a Celica that's like, wow, they spent a lot of money on that. It looks dope. You can also have a Celica that's like, eh, that just gets that person around, and they have a lot of. They have a lot of pride in that vehicle, you know, like one of one of our students, like he has a Celica and he loves it. But I've seen other Celicas, I'm like, dang, that looks, that like people would pay money for that, right? Let's say all of a sudden, like LeBron James buys a certain year of a Celica, soups it up, posts it on Instagram, boom. Everyone's Celica in the country just went up in value by 20 grand. That's not gambling, right? So like what, if you collect cars, you're just gambling that like, that's just value right you know what i mean like like so if i just buy a bunch of cars in hopes that a celebrity is going to now love that car and that it's going to become popular again like no nah, it's just value has it. so again it's it's hard because 
I don't. I think if we call it gambling, these companies like Wizards will have ways to say, but it's it's not technically gambling. It's not. But let's call it what it is. Let's find what to call it and say that it's dangerous and that it can harm people. But the more we call it gambling, I think we distract from the danger that it is. Right. Yeah, yeah that's fair. That's fair. Um, the, at the same time, though, there's what it is. And you're right that it is not actually gambling. It's, you know, you're, you're buying something, you know what you're getting, and just trying to hope that something else happens is not a good idea. But at the same time, we have to admit that there, it is treated as gambling. Like people, yeah, yeah, people. So there's the, yeah. I know that there's a, an accountability part for it where people have yeah. to be accountable for their own actions. But at the same time, I, there is an importance to these organizations uh, being aware of what their product is doing. Yeah, it's like you can't you can't get a can't get Budweiser in trouble because someone got in a car accident. Like right, right. Like, but you know, we could. You can't get you know, Marlboro in trouble for someone getting lung cancer, you know? Um, like, it's so hard, but like there is a way we should be actively fighting this. And I just think, I just think we gotta come up with the right the right word and fight. And I think yours is actually, it's pretty simple to me as far as like call it gambling, just call it gambling and make it so it's 18, right? And then encourage people to sell it, I guess. I don't know what to say about that, but like <laughs> it's it's it goes back to the battle of like, okay, but yeah, but these kids are all playing games where they're shooting and their brains are still cooking. So that's like desensitizing them to it. And I'm like, yeah, like if, but like right now it's illegal for them to play those games. So they're going to play those games. So I think we should be in that space playing those games with them, or they're going to be playing with strangers from a different country or a different state that you will never know. And that's awkward. So, well, those kids shouldn't be playing those games. Well, guess what? Not everybody has kids' parents. Kid, not every kid has parents who are regulating that, right? Right. So, right. okay, well then let's say, Let's say we do a tournament. What game do we want to play? We have a model. We want to play their game, whatever they're playing. Well, they play Call of Duty. Okay, well, then we're going to host a Call of Duty tournament for 13-year-olds. Well, that's bad. Why would you do that? Because there's a lot of 13-year-olds there, and we're going to get them into a safe place by doing that. Well, they shouldn't be playing. Look, I agree, but it's legal. If they made it so you had to be 18 in order to play shooting games, I would actually not fight that law. I, I would not fight that law. It would make my job a whole lot easier because then I could just say, <laughs> we don't play those games because it's illegal. But right now it's a moral battle, right? Whereas it would just be a legal battle at that point and we yeah. wouldn't have to worry about it because we could just say, you can't, so don't. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's not- the things that we yeah. did at GameStop back in the day. We actually enforced the uh, the whole M for Mature, uh, you know, you have to be 18 or older to purchase this game. And if people came in without a parent, we would not sell them that stuff. And yeah. people would get like genuinely confused with that. They'd be like, why can't I just buy this game? Like it's a video game. It's like, sorry, man. Like we, we want to be responsible. Like we want to be uh, accountable yeah. as well. So, it's well, hard. hey, Jamie, uh, thank you so much, man. I want to be respectful oh, of dude. your time. Thank you so much for having, uh, or for, for having me. Thanks for having me, Jamie. I really appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, man. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I know I already said us. it. Sorry for all the hiccups, dude. No, it's not, your, no it's not Steve's fault. <laughs> it, makes, it makes for interesting content, you know, so no, yeah. no big deal. Don't worry about it at all. But uh, yeah. hey, one last time, tell everybody where they can connect with New Hope Foursquare Church and where they can connect with Satellite Gaming. Yeah, connect with New Hope, um, inewhope.org. Uh, and you can also just show up on Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you'll be in that time zone if you're yeah. here, I promise. Um, <laughs> if you show uh, up at 10 a.m. Eastern time while on the West Coast, I'm a yeah. real impressed. Yeah. But uh, hey, some people do digital church, I guess. So uh, tune in there, then; it'll there. be great. But but yeah, that was funny. Uh, satellite gaming, satellitegaming.net, um, satellite GG on uh, various social media platforms, um, and yeah, feel feel free to hang out, see what we're all about. And uh, man, Steve, I'm so grateful for you and, and what you're doing at Save Point Ministries, bro. Thank you, man. I'm grateful for you too and just for all the help you've been and for being here. Uh, to you, chat, thank you guys for being here. And I just want to tell you, chat, I love that each and every one of you were here, but also somebody else would love for you to be there. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. <laughs>